is the Glass Cannon Network. Hey, Dune, don't make it bad. Welcome back to our Dune Adventures in the Imperium miniseries titled Inherit the Sand. This is episode two or three, if you count episode zero as episode one, but that'd be weird. Why would you do that? Um, we are uh, we are we're in the thick of it, and today we're really going to take this beautiful, elegant rule system that Modiphius has created and just uh, just butcher it hor- horribly, I'm, uh, I'm assuming. I, uh, I've just been staring at this. Sometimes I'll stare at a page for hours, and I'm like... I I still don't 100% get this. So this is going to be a real test. The only thing I regret is right around episode five, which will be my last step before it's handed over to Jared. That's, I feel like, the time when I'm going to be super comfortable with the rules. And then I'll be like, well, let's have fun. But you guys will be ready. You guys will be all good to go. You'll have all this practice under your belt. So I'm really just doing Jared a favor while I uh, struggle and drive myself crazy. It's the only way to learn. It truly is. A new game. You have to play it. You can't yeah. just read about it and study it in theory and get a handle on it. You have but to But most people to don't do it. it in front of crowds of thousands. That's the difference. That's the life you chose, Troy. That's the life, That's right. <laughs> That's the life <laughs> I chose. To walk this tightrope. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, before we jump in today, I want to, let's get to know, let's, uh, everybody wants to get to know, uh, you folks a little bit better. And so I thought, what better way than to talk about, uh, our likes and our dislikes, but really our likes. What, what do you prefer? Do you like, uh, a sci-fi story? Do you like a, uh, a sort of medieval fantasy type story? Do you like a cyberpunk? And there's a different, there's a million different ways to like it. Like, how do you like your role-playing games? What do you like to read? What do you like to watch? It's a loaded question. Let's see where we go with it. Uh, in any order? No, oh, I want you to. Someone. I want you to <laughs> stare at each other until someone talks. <laughs> this has now turned into a Zoom class that, like the rest of the world, is. yeah. Oh, should we turn our cameras off? Should we raise our hands <laughs> in the ch- hide non-video participants? <laughs> I'll go ahead and start. Right, Why not? please. Fortune yes. favors the bold. Uh, I, I have to say, first off, Troy, that as soon as you intro the show by saying, hey, Dune, don't make it bad, I immediately <laughs> thought, take a sand thing and make it wetter. So setting, <laughs> <laughs> setting that aside and getting it out of my brain. Make um, sand. Oh, that's and make it I'd wetter. like to not spit take all over my microphone. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I mean, as a Fremen, spit yeah. takes are a big, f- big no-no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no-no, no. no. Conserve yeah. that moisture. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I think of all those sort of like genres you teed up, I, the one I gravitate towards most is ones that feel or are historical fiction. Like, so I like the, for that reason, I really love one of my favorite things about Call of Cthulhu is that you get to play in the actual, like a actual past. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I love things where you get to, where you kind of get to nail the fantastic down with uh, interesting actual historical events. Like some of my favorite books are things like uh, I, Claudius and and things that kind of riff on existing history. And which is part of the reason why I like Dune is because it feels like a, it feels kind of like a historical fiction from the future. Hmm. Yeah. I think Shogun was my first like historical fiction book that I really remember just absolutely falling in love with. And then I just tried to find something else that I liked as much and I couldn't. Yeah, Man, well, I Claudius highly recommended to to all. That's great. Is it good? It, That's they made a movie out of that too, right? It was they, a uh, BBC a, miniseries. Okay. Yeah. 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 I just completed maybe my twenty eighth rewatch uh, a few weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> Man, yeah. I feel like Skid and I are birds of a feather. This stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah totally. It was like I Claudius. Real cinephiles. <laughs> oh yeah. 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 And I did, you? A, I did a a book report on Claudius the God in tenth grade as well. So oh man, big big, uh, big Robert Graves, <laughs> big Graves fan club over here. Love Robert Graves. What's your jam, Skid? I mean, you like a little bit of everything. Yeah, I. You know, it's funny. I I think I love sci-fi, but most like most sci-fi movies and TV shows are not very good. I think because some of the, for at least they don't appeal to me because I think the expectation, it feels like a lot of the time is just like, I ah, just put a bunch of explosions and 
crazy stuff flying around and people will watch it regardless of the quality of the story or the acting or the presentation or anything. So it's like I just look back to those old days like the sci-fi channel shows and uh, I did like watching them sometimes because they were so ridiculous that it was it, that, that that is the kind of thing I enjoy. But uh, yeah, I finally only f- really enjoy like 5% of of sci-fi and like fantasy <laughs> is the same thing but like books is a different thing but like you know so you can picture all this stuff in your mind and uh Kathy what skid is up. saying is that he's a hater that's um, what i'm, I'm hearing hater. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I I so negativity <laughs> yeah i did <laughs> i've just been burned too many times i've, I've been but I've you love the new blade runner and the old blade yeah. runner yeah yeah i i a huge fan of, of both blade runners yes i think yeah. you call that a refined palette Yes. I, I yeah, I I I like to think so. Um but as far as like as stuff to role play in, I agree with Ross that I I also obviously love historical fiction and that is a fun playground to play in. It's one of the reasons I love Delta Green so much. But the one thing that we really haven't done that I would love to do is a, a, a like a hardcore Cold War espionage role playing game somehow, Ooh. like Top mm. Secret or something. That would be that's my dream right now is to be able to do that. I I love that era. I love that like Tom Clancy like style would be so fun to game in. Uh, what is that board game, uh, Becca? You're the board game maestro. That's okay. The, I got this. It's oh. uh, the two. It's just like a two player game. Uh, yeah, Cold I think War. it's called Cold War. Is it? I no, I know. Thinking. I know the one you're talking about. It's got a year in the name. Battleship. Yeah. Maybe it's Battleship. <laughs> uh, I think you're thinking of Twilight Struggle. I think that's yes, the... Twilight Struggle. <laughs> yes, okay. Oh, uh, Joe also got that right from off camera. Yeah, so, oh, yeah, because uh, Joe, Joe Joe owns it, and and that was number one on Board Game Geek for a long time. But yeah, is in terms of role playing games, is Top Secret? Did they make a new version of Top Secret? Yeah, like there was a new version. version. There was a. I, I only know of two ad, two editions. Mm-hmm. I don't know if they're uh, if they ever came out with one like post uh like 1990 but yeah if anyone knows of any like great uh like sort of gritty espionage rule sets that would be that would be nice to know about call in uh yeah, call in becca i feel like you like a little bit of everything tell me i'm wrong i like a little bit of everything troy you're not wrong I knew it. Uh, the game i was thinking of was watergate very different time oh. period obviously Ooh. anything historical that's just old to me there's um, a board game based on watergate <laughs> yeah it's Stop a two-player game, game. yeah wow. i made that mistake where i looked up watergate without writing board game i always do something like that. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is interesting but not what i want so uh, the fact that all history blends together for me i do appreciate historical fiction but i totally lean into fantasy i mean game of thrones may it rest in peace uh season eight never happened Mm -hmm. um (laughs) but uh i really dug into that world i really love that anyone can die at any moment i think that's what draws me to cthulhu i've run a bunch of cthulhu games on my channel good time society (laughs) plug um (laughs) but you made me also think skid of a a world in which i wish someone would create uh an rpg game which is I listened to this book called Circe, which is a retelling of the Odysseus myth oh. from the point of view of the witch that turns everyone to pigs. Pigs, mm-hmm. um, and it's excellent and uh, like an Odyssey themed board game. And you know what? Ooh. That might be Seventh Seas. I should dig yeah. in more. Well, uh, <laughs> Aegon, I think, Aegon, is very yeah. similar. Uh, it's a Blades in the Dark style game set in, uh, like, uh, what was that, Peloponnesian time? It's like ancient Greece. You're, uh, yeah. And you, and you play God, sort of the like, gods are a big part of it. I think the game yeah. exists that you want, and you're going to love it. Uh, I'm so excited for me. I'm glad I asked this question. I'm glad we had this discussion. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Awesome. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, I like fun things, I guess I would say. Um, I was less into sci-fi. I think Dune is a thing that is converting me because, as I said in our last episode, reading, seeing the new movie made me read the book. And I'm like, oh, okay. Oh, it can be bleak in space, too. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Low magic sci-fi is, I, I prefer, at least in my role-playing games, I like a low magic sci-fi. And that's what makes Dune so cool. Uh, what about you, Nora? Um, I would say my favorite is a high fantasy, high magic, low tech setting. Like mm-hmm. I, I think I, I feel like I thrive in the D and D kind of setting. Um, I also love 
Call of Cthulhu playing, uh, you know, I like a little bit of a historical sort of real, like you live in the real world. It's, it's for somebody who has a theater background, I think, I think Ross would agree. Like you, it's easy to jump into a character and really feel that character maybe a little faster than you would with others. I kind of, I kind of struggle a little bit doing the, the sci-fi TTRPGs because I feel like I, I fundamentally lack sci-fi speak in my mm. vernacular like i am just like <laughs> set flux capacitors to warp speed i have no idea what that i'm saying techno jargon right there. i don't know what, what i'm saying i don't know what like that. i don't undercut yourself sorry that's Nora, it, all that's i'm all hearing I have. is star that's wars audio coming through not your voice <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but i don't but i the, but i think the reason why I, I, I feel like i could like dip my toes into dune is because it is you know sci-fi it is in the future but you know, because of the AI, it's not super techy, and so it, it's kind of like that sweet middle spot between like a high fantasy and sci-fi. Yeah, yeah. it like it come. It feels more like fantasy in some ways, even though it really isn't, mm. because it's it's in a, the the feudal structure of the yes. of the society. So yeah. yeah, one of one of the fascinating and very I think kind of bleak things about the Dune world is the idea that like. The ten thousand years from now, the the model of society that would endlessly recur is the feudal system. <laughs> like, that, that is presented as like this sort of natural state to which humanity is doomed to repeat. <laughs> yeah. Please no. Yeah. Please no. <laughs> Though we're in it now. Here we are. You and are the in line it now. between fantasy and sci-fi is an interesting thing because what makes it sci-fi is sort of that the the magic is based on future tech uh, versus the magic being based on magic. But you know, who's to say? What tech is magic and what isn't? Yeah, mm -hmm. but that's the thing too about far future sci-fi. Like this is this is set was like eleven thousand years in the future, and that's why I love stuff like this and Gene Wolfe. I think oh, is totally yeah. brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Like world building, that you know, world uh, Earth and billions of years from now, and you know the same thing with like Jack Vance, the Dying Earth series, which is a huge foundation for original Dungeons and Dragons. I want to so, read some Jack fans. Yeah. I want to read, period, but kids no time. <laughs> can read. You can only Remember read so. rule books. Right. <laughs> yeah, my, I've had a book that I started like right before my first son was born, and I finished uh, after my second son was born. <laughs> read it for <laughs> two and a half years. It was 100 pages. Uh, but... <laughs> Let's talk about the story it was that Hop on Pop. It was called <laughs> the extended version. <laughs> it was the yeah, the director's yeah. cut. Uh, let's talk about the story that we're creating because as I think more and more about um, where we've started and where I, I I hope we'll go. I don't know. I want to be excited and discover it along with you folks. I feel like we're creating a unique story, that a unique Dune story. Like that's my goal is to walk away from this and feel like we created a very cool Dune story. And so let's talk a little bit about last week. We start in this opera house that is owned and operated by House uh, Houdin, uh, Houdin. I think I kept saying Houdin, uh, but uh, it's it's Houdin, right? Houdin. Yeah, House Houdin. So it's, it's an Can opera house. Can you say it the cool way? Well, I feel like we've got a bunch of different pronunciations <laughs> floating around. We've got Houdin, Houdin, Houdin. Houdin. <laughs> like, Houdin. <laughs> that's very Dune, too. It's like how many different pronunciations are yeah. there for Harkonnen? Yeah, right. I think, yeah. yeah, we should keep that a thing and yeah. just pronounce it differently each time. <laughs> yeah, I want to say Kwisatz Haderach as seldom as possible because I'm always afraid I'm gonna, it's going to stumble out of my mouth. Right, uh, just say it the knick-knack paddywhack. The knick-knack paddywhack. You <laughs> are the knick-knack paddywhack. Uh, <laughs> it has been foretold. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, we're in your opera house. It's owned and operated uh, by your house, your house, which Duchess Delessa Houdin has taken over after her mother uh, mysteriously like abandoned the house and went to uh, work as a. Oh, we, we haven't uh, talked about this, I guess. We right? have not. But well, that she abandoned the house. That's all you know. Information. Yeah, sorry, I almost, I almost said too much. But all you know <laughs> is Delessa inherited this and inherited uh, the. Uh, which I'm calling this 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 set design, this this stage design, this theatrical enterprise that is your primary domain. Um, 
you've moved your operations to Arakeen because the Harkonnens, your liege house, were like, uh, saw all of your work, wherever your home planet was, were like, we need this. This Arrakis is miserable. Uh, come bring some joy here uh, by putting on your shows. So you build an opera house here. The thing is, the nobility, the Bene Gesserit, the other noble houses, they don't like the idea of an unwed uh, Bene Gesserit uh, woman running a house all by herself. It's a threat to them. And so knowing this, uh, maybe under pressure for a long time, uh, Delessa Udin makes a deal with her enemy house. House Tyloris. This is an enemy house that goes back generations. Um, over, it seems like what we discovered, a very small slight that just snowballed into pure hatred between these houses. Um, she decides to make a deal to marry the young heir of House Tyloris, Dresden Tyloris, a, uh, a young man that is 10 years her junior. And tonight at the opera, is when they're going to meet face to face for the first time. So he shows up with his parents, uh, Duke Gorin and Duchess Moira Tyloris, along with his uncle, uh, Thurman Tyloris, uh, who you find out is this drunkard, possible Samuda addict. He was the older brother that was supposed to take over the throne, but the father thought he was a, a loser, didn't let him do it. The brother kept him around because he loves him, is like his advisor. And uh, we also go backstage and we meet this Gola named Ilgard Fane, who seems to recognize Pharos, our face dancer, who is in the guise of a human. He looks at him with his beady metal eyes, and he's just a simple accountant there to see how the whole mechanism works backstage because House Tyloris will be taking over House Sudan and all of their uh, holdings. Big move by the Duchess making this union. Meanwhile, this drunkard uncle pulls the Mentat envoy, chief diplomat Aurelius de Grom out into the hallway and basically lets him know, hey, I don't know about what you do with your magic brain, but I'm the advisor here. And if we need you, you better serve our house well. Very aggressive. And then that was speak Thurman? Was that Thurman? Thurman, yes, that's Thurman Tyloris. Uh, the least exciting name I came up with was Thurman Tyloris. <laughs> All I can think of is Thurman Thomas. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, speaking of aggressive, the swordmaster for House Triloris, a man named Dace O'Ren, swordmaster of Ginaz, comes up and is very insulting to your Fremen swordmaster, Corin. Basically, he knows that Corin is... Uh, he's heard the rumors that Corin is a consort of the Duchess. The Duchess has many consorts. Uh, and he basically says, hey, listen, when these houses unite... We're only going to need the one sword master. But if you play your cards right, you can be my wife. Uh, very, very rude. And it takes Corin all her power not to pull out her Chris knife. Stab him in the throat. I wanted to. Mm. I know. I, I was like, please don't. I, I don't know the combat rules <laughs> yet. <laughs> please don't <laughs> please wait until next week. Um, and then we've come back to the opera box, the owner's box. You're watching the show. It's coming to the climax of the opera. And young Dresden is like clutching at his neck. His face is turning blue. He's choking. He's trying to like rip his shirt open. And as he does so, he tumbles out of the owner's box, plummeting a hundred feet or so down to the stage where he's impaled on a prop spear by one of I the I could have done guards. something about the poison. I know, and I regretted it. You told Rule me this afterwards, one, and I was... Don't stumble backwards when you're poisoned. No, that was a bad move. <laughs> Yeah. But you had a really cool idea, and I regretted, like, steamrolling through that scene. Uh, can you say your idea? Oh, I really, because of my um, prana bindu being able to control my body from the inside uh, a a on a molecular level, I wanted to kiss him, taste the poison, take it into myself, and render it moot with my super cool skills, mm -hmm. and then give him the antidote with my own saliva. Ooh. And that would have been awesome. Uh, <laughs> Except he's impaled, so. I completely <laughs> stood the least of his yeah, but he's impaled. You can jump down and do that, but uh, no, he got like swarmed by Harkonnen guards, Tyloris guards, uh, because, oh, that's the other thing. In attendance for this show is a Harkonnen diplomat named Fenton Quill and a 
Spacing Guild Navigator, one of these creatures that floats in these orange melange gas tanks uh, named Dinar Banan, a dignitary. They're seated in, in a box even nicer than the owner's box, and they're watching this all go down. So there's a lot of security backstage. They swarm the stage and, and take the body away. Meanwhile, Pharos rushes back up to the box and the four of you uh, are in there like, what the hell do we do? The Duke and the Duchess Tyloris leave. And you, Becca, say, this is your opera house. You built a secret compartment in the wall for you to escape. And as you start to do so, the Harkonnen guards come in with the diplomat, Fenton Quill, and says, oh, where are you going? And so now you look incredibly guilty and he even tells you you're being detained for questioning uh, with regards to the murder of Dresden Tyloris. Now, something happened that was very interesting at the end of the last episode. I didn't even think in the moment because it was just so much happening. When you saying something like, I have a secret compartment here, absolutely. And so what you should do is spend momentum to create that asset. And where you didn't have momentum, you really could give me threat to create that. So really think ah. about that as we move forward. It's like, if there's something you want to do, and it seems like it wouldn't be super convenient, you absolutely can do it. You just have to pay the currency of uh, momentum and threat. Um, so what, what I said in my head is like, I then spent that threat immediately to have Fenton Quill come in and intercept you. So right now, I can't remember where we're at, but I know you only had one momentum and at the end of the scene, you lose one momentum. So you now have zero momentum. And because I didn't write it down, I'm only gonna give myself four threat uh, as well, even though I think I had more. But as I said to you before we started, <laughs> I'll get that back pretty quickly. <laughs> so now we start a new scene. You're no longer in the owner's box. You are in a holding room on the third floor of the opera house. Maybe it's a room that you used for meetings or to go over set designs, uh, talk, uh, do auditions, who knows. Um, but the feeling in this room, it hasn't been said, but it feels like it is a prison. Fenton Quill, the uh, Harkonnen diplomat that was in attendance, led you in here with several Harkonnen guards who you assume are outside nearby so that you can't escape. I imagine the mood is somber and there's a feeling of dread in the air. Each of you know if you had a part to play in this, maybe one of you did. But those of you who are innocent realize the stakes here. This is being pinned on you, and you look even more guilty now the way that you were caught. Your houses have been feuding for generations. Yeah, you made this deal, but even this deal to marry the young heir, it just seemed a little out of nowhere. So there's motive as well. But finally, an uncharacteristic proposal by the Duchess brings these houses together, and then young Dresden is apparently poisoned, plummets to his death. You know the Harkonnens to be brutal in the way that they handle things. They don't need an excuse to be cruel. And as your liege lords, they have every right to be your judge, jury, and executioner. What are you guys talking about in the room here? Delessa is standing in a corner with her back to it, facing these three people in her employ and wondering if any of them had betrayed her in this way watching their micro-expressions and their movements for any clues. What is our, let me like pull the group, like wh what is our general house attitude towards our liege lords, towards the Harkonnens? Because I think that Aurelius like thinks that they're brutes and he hates the fact that we are under their thumb. But I don't know, how the rest of you feel. I think there's a stoic obedience, but if we want our house to become a great house, we have to be, we have to follow the order for now. Play the game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think uh, Pharos is sort of like, I might think something along the lines of, oh, it was ever thus. If the most beautiful things and the most beautiful creations must seek patronage somewhere. <laughs> How do you think that patronage is attained? Through gentleness? It's true. 
hate having to appeal to these apes. They may be listening. Perhaps we should guard our tongues. Though you know my thoughts. Sorry, I wasn't saying that in character. Um, (laughs) (laughs) But but you're right. You're right, Duchess. Yeah, I don't... I think Aurelius is... I think uh, he he's just I think he's like he's doing that thing where his eyes are rolled back and he's just like trying to see if he missed something. He's just uh, yeah, actually that's that's what he's doing. He's using yeah. his mind palace talent to go back and see if there were any hints of this uh that would that would anything that would hint towards this that he experienced in the recent past. Yeah, so something did, he that he missed. Did Dresden have any food or drink? Okay. Um, let's do a roll, Skid. Okay. Uh, or anything out of the ordinary, yeah. 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 Let's see. In terms of skills here, uh, I like discipline for this. But if you, maybe this is more understand. I feel like we always fall back on understand. Yeah, understand seems less like a catch all. But yeah, I'll do, I'll do discipline. Yeah. I, I, just to try something different, discipline, because you're really using your, uh, your mentat discipline to try and go back and think about uh, what happened. And then what drive are you thinking? Uh, I could make a case. Well, I could make, I think I could make a case for either justice or truth. Yeah. Uh, learning the truth about something or just making sure of the, 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 the fairness of it versus the unfairness of us being accused of this. To me, truth sounds right because you're really trying to figure out what did I miss? Is there something, you know, I feel like understand truth is very, uh, it's kind of a fallback, but let's try discipline truth just to mix it up. Okay. Do you have a, uh, a uh, focus in discipline? Uh, I have, I don't. Okay, great. Um, so uh, you don't get uh, that bonus of anything you roll under your discipline score counting as a critical. Um, but what about uh, your drive statement for truth? Uh, truth is of utmost importance and must be controlled. So. Okay. Um, that sounds like you're in line with your drive statement. Uh, so you are able to use a point of determination if you want, or uh, just roll 2d20 and try and get under your combined discipline truth score. Okay, I think I will not spend any determinate. Actually, that's one thing, Troy, real quick. Hmm. How... I, I thought you only ever could have like one point of determination, but it says you can have up to three. How do you earn, and you start with one. Yeah, you How start you with one. How do you earn more determination? So I, I looked into this right before we started because I think you had asked, somebody had asked last week and I, I didn't give a, a full answer. Basically, when you do an action that uh, has a drive statement, you look at that drive statement. Does your action comply with that drive statement? If it does, then you are able to use a point of determination uh, if you have one. If it doesn't comply with the drive statement, then you have two choices. And both choices will net you a new point of determination. One is to uh, just go ahead with it anyways, even though what you're doing goes against your thing. And what happens is uh, succeed or fail, you get an automatic complication but you also get a point of determination. Or you can uh, not comply with your drive statement and you have to cross it out. And then at the end of the scene, you have to write a new drive statement or you can try to recover it through the spending of, you know, the the in-game things. But you gain it, you gain it when it comes to like, oh, this doesn't quite match what I'm doing right now, but I still want to do it. Um, It also allows for kind of growth as your character's outlook on the world changes. Right, okay. Well, I may end up spending my point of determination after the results of this die roll. So I can okay. re-roll failures. Uh, but I will just, for now, I will just roll. I'm going to set this at a difficulty of two. Okay. Uh, I got two sixes, uh, yeah. which are both successes. So that is that is two successes. I succeed. All right. So your eyes are in your head. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could do it. I wish I could and do it. And you're, uh, I'm always afraid that my, they're going to get stuck up there. As I I'm know. <laughs> Uh, (laughs) all i see is my eyebrows Uh, (laughs) you think back and you're like replaying this it's like watching a film strip you're just seeing these moments and you remember your confrontation with the uncle real real piece of trash this guy uh no it's not like hidden that he's a troubled character um 
You know, you know that there's 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 some weirdness there. He's got to feel like he this is his house, and now it's getting pushed even further away from him uh, with the union of the, uh, Dresden and Delessa because their child will put him even one step further away. So there's motive there for sure. Um, the Duke and the Duchess, your interactions with them seemed pretty good. Um, you look up and you think about Fenton Quill and the spacing guild navigator. Why are they here? Guild navigators don't just show up. They're here on Arrakis for a reason. Why? Are they connected to this? Was his mere presence alone creating some sort of energy around the whole event that allowed things to happen unnoticed? And then the last thing you remember is Dresden kissing the Duchess's hand. Right. Could there have been poison on the Duchess's hand? Did your Duchess murder Dresden? Right. And, and I'm already a little up. suspicious of her generally. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, okay, so that's interesting. So, I think after these cal- he makes these calculations and enters his mind palace, uh, he sort of slyly reaches into one of his multiple layers of robes and pulls out his Ixian damper and like sets it on the table turns it on and he lays out all everything you just said except for the well actually you know what is the Ixian damper the cone of silence thing yeah 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 I I forgot you had that Yes, we may speak freely for now until this is taken from me. And he just lays it out. And I think he mentions too, he was just like, and your grace, not to implicate you, of course, but the last thing that I witnessed was the young heir kissing your hand before, before he started choking. Of course. Why didn't I remember that? I'm going to look at my hand and lick it and there you go Boom. Uh, i want to <laughs> use my prana bindu conditioning to try and assess if there is any toxin there okay um let's get rolling because this is how we build momentum <laughs> this is my first roll and create Ooh. complications which i like uh yes, yes. all right so skill you know it's, it sucks but it's I, I would i would argue discipline again here or understand so ladies choice this um, is definitely part like of like my discipline. <laughs> like a little kitty cat. Yeah. A disciplined little kitty cat. Right. Do you start cleaning yourself? Out of, out of, uh, <laughs> Certainly. Uh, all right. So discipline and then what drive here? Power, um, faith? I think, well, my statement for justice is I will protect those in my care. Meaning how Houdon. 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 Ha. Ha. Houdon. Um, <laughs> that's how I pronounce it. And um, so because of my specific statement, I'm going to say discipline justice. Discipline justice. Okay. Do you have a uh, focus in discipline? I have command. Ooh. So I, that doesn't really apply. But I think as long as you have the focus, correct me if I'm wrong, if anyone knows, I think as long as you have the focus, you're allowed to uh, get the bonus, which is what is your discipline score? Seven. All right, so anything a seven or under counts as two. I could be wrong about that, but I, I think, think as long I as think you... I think that the focus has to apply to the situation. Okay, all right, if that's two versus one, then forget what I just said. Uh, and do you have a drive statement for, what did you say, power or faith? Uh, justice. Justice. Neither. I will pr- protect those in my care, okay. which is also a seven, so... Uh, all right, so your target 14 or is, below a success? Yep, and that certainly fits with your drive. You're trying to protect your house. Okay. We must protect this house! A bit. Oh. You want to buy any more dice? Okay. She just went right in. <laughs> yes, can I, can I give you threat after? A little post threat, sure, sure. We're still learning the uh, the the flow here. What do you want okay. to give? You want to give me uh, one threat to buy a single d twenty? Yes. What's one threat between friends? I'll That'll pretend bring me... I don't know that I uh, I won't tell you what happened. Okay. Okay. Excellent. So I have a two 
and a 14. So you got Ooh. two successes. All right. Awesome. I forgot to tell you the difficulty, but I was going to keep it at two, uh, just like Aurelius, because you are a Bene Gesserit uh, sister, and your Pranabindu conditioning, this is, you can do this in your sleep. And so you lick, you taste, you sense, you let it flow through you like the water of life. And you do not detect even the slightest trace of poison. Aurelius, your theory was a sound one, but I detect nothing on my person. You would blame your duchess before you blame these outsiders? No, I am simply stating a fact. There is no blame to be laid yet. I go up to Corrin and sort of like lay my head on her neck and just whisper thank you. (laughs) Hey, listen, don't gang up on me. Mm. But I'm I'm kind of like calling off the dogs. Uh, Not 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 to call you the dogs, uh, but like the, it's it's all right, calm down, kind of. (laughs) It's it's very much to calm me down. I I see, hi, my my forgiveness, your grace. I beg your forgiveness, your grace. You don't need my forgiveness. Yes, of course, I I confess that I do not have the mental alacrity of your advisory friend, but I fail to see who in this room has the appropriate motive for such a public act of murder. If the navigator, as Aurelius says, was here to cloud the minds of those who could perceive affairs, then perhaps the Harkonnens themselves are in some way complicit in what appears to be some sort of frame job. It's possible. It seems to be the obvious choice. However, put it past them. It may be to our advantage to keep our minds open, although the Harkonnens seem at guilt here. But Pharos, we must not eliminate the possibility of those who murder simply for the pleasure of it. Oh, From where you I come, sh- perhaps. I uh, don't I say that you. last part. <laughs> assure you, I assure you, Your Grace. I, I never underestimate one's willingness to do anything for the sake of pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> what if it's treason within Tyloris's own house? Yes, it seemed to me that the. Uh, the uncle of the late young master was something of a bore. Unless I'm very much mistaken, Mr. de Grom. No, oh, absolutely. It's, uh, horribly rude to me. And it seems to and me last... his line of succession has just been somewhat more cleared. Yes, and perhaps it's a recency bias and my own personal bias he's speaking, but he is, as a result, my number one suspect at the moment. Yes, Dresden would certainly have come under my control and command, as we planned. However, Thurman may not have liked that his status as an advisory would be diminished in the binding of these houses. Do we think that perhaps the others in employ in House Tyloris may have been concerned for their own positions as well, I believe. There was a swordmaster or many other heads of house. Yes, well, their oath of a swordmaster was quite confident in himself that he would gain the rightful position of swordmaster once your union was settled. So he welcomed the change, you suspect? Not sure that he welcomed it. He didn't seem to care for me very much, but he very much believed that he was very secure in his position. So I don't see not care for you, Corin. Well, apparently, should sway me. Apparently, is something swayed him because he, I guess, proposed to me at some point. Oh. Had I eaten, I would have vomited right over him, but... He did not consider the proposal. I have heard he possesses great looks. There's nothing of him that interests me. But I don't think that he would have gone to such lengths, considering that I don't think he felt threatened. Stupid on his part. 
Well, we have our suspects. The next question is what to do with them should we ever escape this prison. Or will the Harkonnens simply put us all to death and have the matter be done with? <clears throat> what do they stand to gain if this had you been able to wed or versus now? That's my question. Would the yes. Harkonnens, would they gain any kind of, would they have any claim over our jurisdictions just based on our feudal relationship if there was no heir? Yeah, so certainly House, the new House Tyloris would still fall under their jurisdiction, uh, but by joining House Tyloris and House Houdin together, it kind of would raise your stature uh, in the Lonstrad, and so it, it does pose a threat to Har the Harkonnen, uh, House Harkonnen, as well as a lot of the other uh, House Majors uh, around who might be vying for position. And the fact that you're on Arrakis and gaining power makes you even more dangerous. So there's a lot of people that could uh, stand to gain from uh, eliminating you or <laughs> letting you eliminate yourself. I think it's interesting too because I, maybe I'm misreading it, but I, I think like I see this as our house being like an old house that has this sort of it's a more old more, money, yeah, old money <laughs> with like with you know with a lot of debt, you know. But mm -hmm. it's like we have this reputation. We have the, like most of our cachet is in our reputation, where it's like we don't have a lot of like actual physical power. Whereas, like, that, that too, like, that would fill in, like, this weak spot of ours if we did combine with this other house. There's a so. ceiling on how much you can earn with building theaters mm -hmm. versus right. manufacturing right. goods. <laughs> Right. Yeah, and House Tyloris's primary domain was machinery, and so right. they there was a lot of money coming in there. Uh, there was machinery could be used for any number of things on Arrakis. We're like A24 Cinema, and they're Warner Brothers. <laughs> this would have been a, a good acquisition. Yeah. But, uh... Theros, you were speaking to somebody. I overheard you on our communication line. I confess that I had some words with their house accountant. Just a minor functionary. But, uh... Most perceptive gaze. An artificial gaze, if I might say so. But I didn't detect in him anything that I would call a motivation for underhanded acts. Was he of House Tyloris as well? He was indeed. But it is to be assumed, to speak plainly, that he has some contact with the Tilaxlu. Tilaxu. <laughs> to have had such artificial enhancements, yes? Hmm. Uh, not only uh, a conference or engagement with them, but a product of them. He, ah. He is a Gola. Your Grace. <gasps> I understand. A resurrected man. A revenant. The type without moral qualms or inhibitions. It is said that the Tlilaxu only allows qualms into that which they create at their leisure, so it is safe to say that perhaps whatever morals he has are the morals that they have. But I don't like to speak of the wretches any more than I have to. They... Agreed. Make my gorge rise as much as yours, I'm sure. Horrifying, an abomination. Wretched. An affront to the orange Catholic Bible. Unnatural. <laughs> Indeed. There's a twinkle in my eye as I linger, making eye contact with Pharaohs just a moment too long, mm. knowingly. <laughs> Gives him one a of big the old <laughs> wink! <laughs> uh, so as you're... Uh, going through all the possible suspects um, weighing you know who stands to gain the most from this uh, the door opens and the sword master of house Tyloris Dace O'Ren enters he gives a uh, perfunctory bow to you duchess and a uh, sideways smirk at Corin. 
She sort of sneers back. I think I said he was played by Michael B. Jordan. He, uh... Oh, if I have any warning at all, I take the Ixian dampener, tuck it away. Sure, once you hear that door uh, start to turn, yeah, you don't point. want anybody seeing that. Yeah. Uh, he comes in and uh, he says, My lady, my new Fremen friend, this may be hard for you to believe, but I come in peace. The Harkonnen gods allowed me to pass because they think I am a messenger from Duke Tyloris, but truthfully, I come of my own accord. The fact that they allowed me in here armed to the teeth with my blade means that they most likely hope that I exact vengeance on you. Or they are certain that we are no allies. Is vengeance what you wish? It is not, Your Grace. Do with that info what you will. But I'm sure I don't have to tell you that something is amiss. You see, long before I was a swordmaster serving House Tyloris, I was a bullfighter. And when you stand across the ring from a wild beast such as that, all you have to go on is instinct. Even a, a split second misreading of its, of, its, of its tiniest movements could mean your death. So ever since this betrothal between our houses was made public, I have watched you, Your Grace. Watched I looked at Corrin sneakily, quickly. <laughs> Yes, I've watched you from the shadows. I know who you are. I also know what you are capable of. And though I believe you are more than capable of committing an act such as this, this is not your doing. You have been set up. By who? I know not. But the scales of justice are being forced against you, and it is my belief that you will leave here in chains if you leave here at all. Then what help can you offer to us? What brings you to this room? Well, while it is true I owe no allegiance to you, I come here because of the love I bore for that boy. He was my charge. Sometimes I felt as if I was more of a father to him than the Duke Tyloris could ever be. Now I know that our houses have always been at odds, but that started long before I joined House Tyloris, and my loyalty lies with Dresden. So I will mm. see justice done in his name. Even if it means betraying your own house? I would do no such thing, for to find out who his murderer was will bring justice to both our houses. Then our goals are aligned, and we are sincerely sorrowful at your loss. Thank you, as I am to you, for though you did not know the young man, he would have been a great husband and leader of your house. It's true we met only briefly, but I could see the spark within him. Yes, this was an arrangement made out of what would be advantageous to my house. However, upon meeting him, my desires changed. He's very kind. Or was. I can see why you would feel such an affinity towards him. But that is done. Now, we must clear the name of our house in order to find the murderer of your charge. And we can't do that thinking in circles and wallowing in sadness. No, we cannot. Me coming here is as much help as I can offer, though, without putting myself in danger. May we call upon you if the time arises and we find a purpose for your skills, and I give him a little up and down, eyeing. You may. And if there's any help I can provide you, I will. But now, 
You must escape this place with all haste, and it will not be easy. Harkonnen guards roam the stairwells and the hallways. There are nobles, even now as we speak, in the great salon and the restaurant, drinking and dining the night of way, because you see, your grace, the death of a young heir of a house minor and the fall of your insignificant house. It does not affect the true nobility. Life just goes on as normal for them. Perhaps that's what they want. House Sudan and House Tyloris putting their past behind them to unite would shake things up in ways that would perhaps upset the status quo. This Harkonnen lackey, Quill, he has sent for the adjudicator. If you are still here when they arrive, you are lost. Find a way out of this building and find some place safe to hide until the truth outs or, better yet, until you find a way to prove your own innocence. Before you go, please tell us, what is the scene outside this door? How many Harkonnen, Harkonnen guards stand there? There are guards, two, patrolling this floor, the stairwell through the hallway, and then I would assume another set of guards on the stairway below us. You know the layout of this building more than I do, but there is the restaurant and the great salon, and then of course the lobby, which is your only way out. In fact, let's go to the map. <laughs> he says he carries a map of our building on him <laughs> he's <No>. good <laughs> so here is a, a representation of the opera house from where you are uh, one of the ways in which this game works when a conflict arises and you are certainly in a conflict is movement between zones uh, so you are in the holding room and you see the only thing connected to the holding room is a hallway from the hallway you can go either way to lead to a stairwell those stairwells lead down to another stairwell which then individually the one on the left leads to the great salon the one on the right leads to the restaurant the great and the salon and the restaurant are connected but both of them are the only ways to get into the lobby and then outside. So where you are in the holding room, it's a tricky situation. He told you that there are uh, two guards uh, roaming the, the hallway and the stairwell. And he said he imagines there are more guards on the stairwells below. So now that you've got that information, I will add them to the zone map as well. So, Troy, how many threat do you want for me to make a secret passage in this room? <laughs> There's not enough threat in the world! Uh, yeah, no, this is going to really be uh, our stress test of the mechanics here, because mm. as he uh, bids you good luck and adieu and hopes to see you on the other side, he leaves, and now you are left with this situation. This is tricky, and we're gonna we're gonna kind of figure this out as we go. Um, but I, I made that cheat sheet for y'all about how conflict works. Now the situation as it is, you've got a lot of options, and the way the game works is when it comes to your turn, you can do a couple different things. You can move. And even moving, there's different things you can do. You can try to move subtly or move boldly, and those are high risk, high reward situations. The other thing you can do is use an asset. And using an asset is a very broad term for like, well, what do you want to do here? If you come into one of those guards and, and the guard catches you because you didn't move stealthy, stealthily enough, the using of an asset might be pulling out your Chris Knight and stabbing him. It might be punching him in the face. Um, it may come to that. Uh, you know, the, the, the threat of, of real violence happening is, is very real here. And although that might make things even worse for you down the line, you understand that that may come to that. Um, and none of our weaponry or shields or anything has been confiscated. No. One point of clarification. <laughs> yeah, no, I would say you have, because you're the only one with a, a true weapon, right? No one else has a... Yeah. Oh, you have a Gom Jabbar, uh, yes. Duchess Hudin. So there's no way they would have found that. But that Chris Knife, I think, uh, that Fremen Chris Knife could have easily been concealed on your person. No one knows where I keep my Gom Jabbar. <laughs> no, and hey, no one asks. Uh, 
But mm -hmm. the way conflict, and this is going to be, we're going to kind of go through this very slowly because there's a lot of different options. I mean, I sent you a, a crib sheet that was two pages that was condensed down from about 12 from the book. But basically, it's not like roll for initiative. You guys will get to go first. And I can tell you that if you just look out the hallway, you would know that every few minutes, one guard will move into the hallway and then he'll move back to the stairwell, and then the other guard will move into the hallway, and then he'll move back into the stairwell. You don't know what the guards on the second floor stairwells are doing, but it does allow you to decide when you want to act. If you're like, okay, I'm going to act first, because you decide amongst yourselves who's going to act first, and you can tell me when you want to go, like when the guard is in the hallway or when the guard is in the stairwell. And if it's a guard in the hallway, which guard, left guard or right guard? Now, normally, if you're just trying to move, it's a free action. You can do that, no problem. With this, where you are in a, a very precarious position, I'm going to say that movement into the, even just the hallway, is going to be a difficulty too. Now, another option you can do is to move subtly or move boldly, which also is a flat difficulty too. But these are the high risk, high reward things that I talked about. If you want to move subtly, you roll a, a check difficulty two and if you hit it you're allowed to either move one extra space or move one of your other assets forward to zone uh actually maybe i got that wrong i think maybe it's you can move one of your enemies a zone or one of your assets another zone and then or, or is that move boldly i'm already messing it up <laughs> let me get my cheat sheet here i'm impressed by the effort I know, I almost got it. Okay, move subtly. If you pass, then you can move your asset. Oh, and reduce the cost to keep the initiative to zero. So this is another uh, another bit of the, the game here. It's like, say, uh, Corin wants to be the first to act, and she is going to stealthily move out into the hallway. When you're done your turn, it now goes to my guards, and that guard could then immediately move into the hallway and confront you if you didn't do something to uh, create an asset to hide yourself or something. But if you want, you can give me two, uh, you can use two momentum or give me two threat to keep the initiative so that one of your allies can now act or you can go again, but your next checked is at a plus one difficulty. So move subtly allows you to move and also keep the initiative at a, without spending momentum or giving threat. If you move boldly, you provoke a hasty response from your opponent. If you pass, you get to move your asset and then you get to, you get to move your asset or yourself basically. And you can move another asset. So for example, if Corin wanted to move boldly into the hallway and you, hallway and you succeed, you could send one of those other guards further down the stairwell so that you could get your friends away if you move boldly. Now, I said high risk, high reward, because if you fail to do either subtly or bold movement, you, uh, your enemy can move one zone for free and you cannot keep the initiative. So that's, that's very high risk because they could then close on you if they're only a zone away and you have no chance of being able to immediately act again. And then in terms of using an asset, if you take that action, one thing you can do is just like take your turn to, I'm gonna think, I wanna gain information here. What's the, roll, roll a, a thing to gain information. Or you can remove a trait from a scene. All these different zones are gonna have their own traits, which you'll soon find out. Uh, you overcome an obstacle. There's just a million things you can do. So the best way that I think we can move forward is like, tell me what you wanna do, describe it dramatically, and then I'll come up with a roll for it. I kind of have an idea, guys. Let me know what you think. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. If if this is if this sounds good as far as a strategy goes, uh, we do know that there is they're they're taking turns each coming into that hallway, like taking rounds. Yes. Yep. So, if we time it out to where, let's say, for example, the guard on our on the right of the map comes in. If I were to very stealthily be out in the hallway and just try to off him without making a sound and drag him back into the stairwell, that other guard will keep on his watch like nothing's happening, right? Mm. And maybe we could move. Just don't make too big of a blood splatter. Yeah. Yes. Are they checking in with each other when they trade? Or is this purely so well-timed, so well-coordinated that they know? 
Yeah, no, they might wave to each other. But I would say the for ease of drama, the hallway and the stairwell is far, far, far enough away that unless you get a complication, they probably can't hear a murder go down. But like no communication system. No, no. Okay. no. That's the beauty of this low tech uh, Love it. universe. Yeah, they don't really have that. What do you think? Uh, I I abhor violence, and I think that may be a risk to our future case if we were trying to trying to uh, exonerate ourselves. <laughs> Murder I one of the think guards. that they would be able. Are they? Are we able to negotiate with them? I don't know if we are. We are able to at this point anymore. As the arbiter is coming to presume our innocence or guilt at the murder of a young man, I don't think killing the guards would reflect well. Should we not escape successfully? Although I know your prowess with a Chris knife is impeccable. Pharos. Um, perhaps some. Um... Perhaps if someone could slip by, create some sort of diversion, might ease your passage through the halls. A uh, mortal arbitrament, such as our friend Corin suggests, could be avoided. Is there someone we can call upon to create a diversion? Since there is no one here, Close at hand on whom to call, I volunteer myself. Yes, that seems possible. Perhaps if they were to think you are amongst their ranks. I also might use a trick of my own. I don't say this to the group, but I have the Bene Gesserit voice as one of my talents, um, which I uh, have in my back pocket should we need to try and command them. The dumber they are, the better it will work. <laughs> I like this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's very tricky uh, the way it's laid out here in terms of the movement of zones because you've got the other guards on that bottom stairwell. So it's a, it's a puzzle that I'm really excited to see how you're going to figure out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You go, you you get by one, you've got another waiting for you. Okay. So while, while Corin always wakes up choosing violence, uh, I think uh, for now, <laughs> will not for the for the sake of, of her lady. Corin, your bloodlust is one of the finest qualities about you, but perhaps we use that as a last resort in this particular case. Agreed. But we will get you out of here. And let's jump into it right after this quick break. (laughs) Now we'll jump into it. Uh, (laughs) So who wants to go first? We're going to go through this really slow. I'm not going to pull any fast ones on you unless I start spending threat. Uh, But who wants to go first? And in what position do you want these guards if they're doing a very uh, methodical back and forth? Quick. Rules question. Mm -hmm. Uh, Remind me if this is correct. We will gain momentum if we roll more successes than needed. Right. So uh, if the difficulty two, if you roll three successes, you gain one momentum. Roll five successes, you gain three momentum. Uh, And then momentum can be spent to do any number of things. Obviously, buying dice is what we've done so far. Um, You can also create a trait change a trait that's in the scene uh, if, if a stairwell is dark you can make it well lit I don't know why you want to do that you're trying to sneak out uh, you can also use uh, momentum to obtain information uh, and you can spend that like if I give you a little bit of info you'd be like I want to give you another point of momentum to find out a little bit more and if you don't think what I say is satisfactory you get the momentum back yeah I think kind of the sense I get is that 50-50 when you earn momentum you spend it right away or you hold on to it it's like it's half the time you spend it immediately after rolling it, and then half the time you hold on to it for later. Yeah. Generally. Yeah, and remember the creation of assets. And assets is a very broad term. They can be tangible, like I pull out a, a blade from my belt, or it can be intangibles, like I know that God's wife is sleeping with the town <laughs> fishmonger. <laughs> right. Uh, so what are you thinking? Okay, I mean... I, I want to send Pharaohs first. I'm okay. just going to go Not for it. Yes. Here's some intelligence, though, that Pharaohs would definitely like. Does Pharaohs does know the direction 
that um uh what's what is the name of the uh Tylora Swordmaster again? Deso Ren. What does he know the direction down the hall that Deso Ren peeled off when he exited? For sure. You could uh you could look to Aurelius and Aurelius recorded it in his head mm-hmm. and yeah. he turned uh to the uh, left. So it'd be he stage left. right. Great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Thank he would have went to Aurelius. Right. Um great. Uh so turned left. So I um so I will attempt to time my exit uh, and for a moment that the hallway is clear of, for the moment that the hallway is kind of clear of uh, guards. Okay. And turn to the right. Okay. And will you be just doing a regular move or do you want to move subtly or do you want to move boldly? I am going to regularly move, but there will be a slight Hiccup, <laughs> and here, so just stop me if you're like uh, if you if if it's rolling time. <laughs> but if I so Pharaoh's is like, of course you're great, and um and then after uh, and uh, after he's like to the left. Thank you, Master de Grom. Um, wait for me for about a moment, and then hastily make your uh, if I might suggest your grace to go down the way, our friend just departed. I exit the door and shut it behind me. And in this empty liminal space of this of this hallway, like if you just focus up on 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 Ferris's hand on the doorknob, suddenly the whole hue of the hand changes. <laughs> and as and as you look up, like you just see bones like knitting and reshaping <laughs> as like eyes oh. drift out and back and hair is changing the whole beard is like being sucked up into the flesh of the face and it is if it is disturbing and odd is like just the planes of the shape of the face shift and change into a less human and then more human shape as uh pharos is now that same sword master who left (laughs) departing the other way down the stairwell Wow! <laughs> okay, brilliant. So, so I'm, actu- I'm actually not gonna let make you uh, roll the the uh, the the difficulty two move check uh, because they this other guy wouldn't have known that you uh, went down the other hallway. Um, okay, so you uh, you should have the ability to move your piece, but I will move it uh, right into the hallway. Okay, right there. Uh, great. Okay. Uh, you know what? Go ahead and give yourself a point of momentum as well, just because that was so cool. Nice. Uh, Awesome. Sweet. Now, the question is, what do you want to do here? Do you want to keep the initiative, which will cost, uh, you don't have the the momentum to buy it, so you'd have to give me two threat. Uh, or do you want to let one of these guards step into the hallway, uh, on his turn and see the Swordmaster? Oh my! Uh, <laughs> so that's that's big chance because if it's the one that where this guy just walked past them, that's a problem. I I, I want to make sure that I only engage with the ones who didn't see him leave. Uh, with, with I want and to. I would say you could time it to know that like the next one that's coming in there is the one that didn't see him leave because that, Aurelius told you which way he went. You're watching, 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 and you made your move. Great. In that case, in that case, I won't. I won't. I'll, I'll be cagey with with the threat and just be here to to take my next move on on the turn without so and so I'm I guess I'm ceding the initiative back to you yes Great. and I will take it uh, I will tell you the traits of the hallway are bright and quiet if okay. that uh, is anything that means anything to you uh, and sure enough uh, a Harkonnen guard slides up. And looks at you. What are you doing here? <laughs> Just uh, and and uh, the face turns to him. Is like, am I not allowed to relay messages from my master to the prisoners? <laughs> oh, my apologies. And I give a huge sarcastic bow to this, uh, um, to this uh, a guard. It's like, I'll go, I'll go, your majesty. 
<laughs> no. <laughs> and just uh, and, and back down the stairwell. Okay. And uh, he looks down at your uh, much more impressive blade. Uh, Oh, and I should say that this doesn't change my attire. It would just be my face. I'm just oh, in okay. So you don't neutral, even have the blade. Neutral stuff. So he just looks at your uh, overwhelming presence, and uh, yeah, that's right. Get out of here. May we be <laughs> listening at the door to this exchange and hearing the guard's voice? Totally, absolutely. Nice. Um, and this is an interesting position for you now because he is staying in that hallway, waiting for Pharaohs to go but it's not Ferris's turn. It's one of your turns. <laughs> Kill him, Corin. Mm. Kill him, Corin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know what my, my sweet Corin would do in this position, and to uh, limit her ability to spill blood preemptively, I will use this moment. I will absorb the voice I have heard. And I do pick up, uh, I imagine, on what Pharaoh has taken on his visage. Um, and I want to take that voice in, interpret it, understand the ways in which I could manipulate my own vocal cords to undermine this person that responds in this gruff, aggressive way. And I want to open the door and command him to restrain the other guard in the other stairwell. <laughs> restrain that guard. <laughs> okay, this sounds like communicate. Yes. Yes. And what drive do you want to use here? Hmm. You know, this really feels like power. Not only am I using the power that I was taught by the Bene Gesserit conditioning, but I am using that, and in my own mind, it is justifying why the Bene Gesserit deserve this power. Because my statement is the Bene Gesserit will control the Imperium. Okay. Do you have uh, a discipline that, excuse me, a focus that fits for communicate? Uh, in Communicate, I have inspiration, but under Discipline, I specifically have Command. So I think... You, all right, so yeah, you can, I, you can make an argument for Discipline. So you want to go with Discipline, Power? Discipline, Power. Okay. Also, in the voice as a talent, uh, it says... When I can observe someone for a short while, uh, they can hear me speak. When I use the voice, I can add one, two, or three points to threat to score the same number of automatic successes. Wow. Now you may uh, want to do ooh, that. It does say on any communicate test made to influence your chosen target. So I feel like I chose my focus poorly. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, no, that's okay. If you want to switch back to communicate, that was the one that I originally suggested. So you get to use that power. Yeah. Um, but maybe it's not as high a score for you. Uh, and you won't get that uh, automatic success for rolling under your communicate because your discipline doesn't, or excuse me, your focus doesn't quite fit what we're doing here. It's up to you. Well, I, I do think... also, I have my advisor skill, so I can uh, give her advice in a, in a communicate test, and she would be able to re-roll a die after the fact. Ooh. Ooh. Um, well, here's what I'm going to lay out for you. I'm going to say, this is, because this is, so much hinges on the success of this test, uh, this is a difficulty three test and I'm going to add two threat to make it difficulty four. <laughs> okay. Okay. So we only have one momentum. Yep. And now I'm down to three threat after spending those that two. Okay. So I would like to because I'm going to need four, so I have to I, I would like to um spin that momentum to get an extra die, so I'm rolling three dice. Um, uh, can you? Is it one for one? Yes. Great. All right. So now it's zero momentum, three threat, and you have three dice. And then I would like to use the ability of the voice to get automatic successes. Uh, I want 
help from the team. It's one for one to give you threat, which is a better um, a better one to one here than just buying more dice. Maybe I buy two successes, and then on these three dice, I have to roll two more successes. So they're free, the with the with the voice. They're free successes. They don't turn a die into a success. Correct. Okay. And you also, where you have a drive statement, you could use a point of determination as well to have an automatic critical, which is two successes. Oh, but then I don't get to roll anything, and I like to leave it to chance. Yeah, a chance is bit. fun. I yeah. want to make that chance slimmer. Let me just read what this specific thing, so you can tell me if it means the die is automatically a success. When you use the voice, you may add one, two, or three points to threat to score the same number of automatic successes on any communicate test. So it doesn't say. I think that means that you're basically your your the dies that you roll are automatic successes. So it doesn't you still you lose those die in automatic successes. Interesting. Okay, and you're saying I can spend a determination to make one of them a a crit, basically, and count as two. Right. Okay, I will spend my determination to make a crit. I will uh, spend a, a give you one threat to make another one a success, and then I'm going to roll one because rolling dice is fun. Let's see what happens. What's your okay. number you're trying to hit? So we chose communicate and power. Together, that's 16. So I need one to 16. One to 16, and if you we go. roll a we one, go. you'll get you'll gain a point of momentum. Yeah. It's a nat 20. Oh, I was just going to say, I didn't want to jinx you, but I was about to say, if it's a nat 20, it's complication, but skin. Oh, no. Wait, so I'm going to use I'm my- I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm going to yes. use my advisor talent right now. It says, it's your grace, these people are, these people are brutes. This is like, they, they do not understand refinement. They only understand force. So you get to re-roll that 20. That's awesome. Oh, thank God. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. That is um, a cool power. Yeah. Yeah, the powers in this game are great. Yeah. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Come on, low. It's a 17. Oh, no. Oh, no. I'm so sorry. It's been. um, There's a frog in my throat. Okay. (laughs) And it comes out croaking. Basically, because you didn't roll a complication. It just fails, um, but it sucks because you lose. He's created an opportunity for here for you here, and you've now lost that opportunity. So maybe uh, the way it plays out is you open the door and you say that, and the guy's like, what? And turns around, and, and nothing happens. But now, if you guys don't seize the initiative, that other guard is going to come into where Faris is standing. We pay two momenta, or we pay give you two threat to seize it? Give you two threat, yeah, so I'll be up to six Six. threat. I think we do it, right? Yeah. I think I I turn to Corrin and I say, now. Showtime. (laughs) (laughs) Non-lethal, (laughs) non-lethal. I say, now, spare him if you can. All right, so you see Corrin just has her hand on her knife her eyes are closed and you see this like little flashback moment of Corin as a young child and you see this like it's a very slow motion montage of like sand blowing across the desert and then she's like a uh, this little girl you see with like a circle of Benny Gesserit sisters and they uh, you hear their voices say to her in times of uncertainty let your faith guide you and so she is using her faith to, and she calmly collects herself, opens her eyes, takes her sword out, ready for whatever is going to come, and enters the room. And enters the At room! First, stealthily. Uh, yes. So, d- 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 let me see here. Uh, you pass, you move your asset, and then move it trying to think, can you move in and attack in the same round? I, I want to, you to be able to. I don't see why you can't. I'm going to say you can't. So you're going to slide in there and you're going to attack. Uh, 
so this guy is basically, I'm going to roll to see how many successes you're going to need. He's going to try and okay. defend himself. You know, if we're going, if we're going balls to the walls, all out, I'm going to do. I'm not going to go stealth. I'm going to go battle and faith. Battle and faith. Okay. Yeah. I like this because he's turning around. What was that sound? And you realize uh, the du- Duchess that you failed. You give her the nod, and she just. You don't even have to leave the room. You can just slide the knife out. Uh, oh, two successes. So you, that he sets the difficulty because he's like quickly trying to defend himself. Do you defeat him? I will say this. If you roll a natural 20, you will accidentally kill him. If you roll anything less, you'll just uh, knock him up. Okay. Uh, and so it's rolling two d20s. Yep. You start with two. And then okay. uh, what else do you want to do? Uh, um... <laughs> You could use a point of determination if you haven't used yours yet. Somebody used one there I use, last I week. I used mine. Because oh, that mine. would be an yeah. automatic success for you. Yeah. Um, but uh, okay, So yeah, we're just, rolling two. Yep. Now, what is your uh, what number are you trying to hit here? Okay, so because I'm using uh, my faith, faith is a seven, and battle is an eight. Okay, and what is your faith drive statement? My faith, uh, let's see, I have to pull it up here. It says, my faith gives me certainty where others might doubt. My faith gives me certainty where others might doubt. Does it fit here? Because she put a lot, she was ready to go and then wanted, Uh, because her duchess was like, no, let me handle this first, mm -hmm. which is against everything that she stands for. She had to kind of like put her belief that whatever this is, her faith will get her through it. I love it. Okay. And what is your uh, focus in battle? Long blades. Long blades. Mm-hmm. And that's what you're using? Yes. Okay. And what is your battle score? Uh, an eight. All right. So anything under an eight counts as two successes where you have that focus. Roll away. Okay. Big roll here. This Huge. could get messy. Huge. I rolled a seven and a three. Oh my God. Wow. All right, so that's four successes. You gain yes. two points of momentum. Yes. Awesome. That's can, my girl. You can bank that momentum or you can spend it right now to uh, create a trait, change a trait, create an asset in the scene. This is where the game starts getting crazy. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Because we still have, we, we still have, uh, um, we're not all out yet. No. Our, our Mentat is still is still inside the room. And yep. so have and I, I have I res- have I restrained him because we we went for a non-lethal, yes. Yeah, I'd say you came out and maybe you hit him with the the dull edge of the blade and you just hit him right on the side of the head and he yeah, collapsed just to the floor. Knock him down. <laughs> knock him out. Sweet. Okay. And you see the swordmaster standing there. Yeah. Deso Ren Deso Ren is a uh, Standing just a just a few feet away yeah. with a f- shocked expression oh. and different clothes, just like. <laughs> and I, are are you here to help us? The help I have to offer has already been given, my lady. <laughs> That's certainly one way to make good your escape. And I sweep away down the stairs if I can. <laughs> yeah, you I will I, when it comes back to you. I'll do that. In time. <laughs> so um, I definitely did not know who that, like, did not recognize. Very confused. Okay. Uh, mm-hmm. So I, I kind of um, motion. So it's still our initiative? It is, but now it's going to be theirs because I believe you guys already kept the initiative once. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. So now things will get a little bit interesting because very simply put, the other guard steps in. Oh, no. <laughs> notices one guard down, sees the sword master that he just let walk by, sees Delessa standing in the doorway of, excuse me, sees Corin standing in the doorway, holding the flat end of her blade over this collapsed body. It's like, hey, what's going on here? And now it is Aurelius' turn. <laughs> uh, okay, well, I still have one asset that I haven't used yet. I pull out my ornithopter. <laughs> I climb into it and I ram him. And you unfold it and fly away. Oh. Uh, <laughs> okay. Collapsible ornithopter. <laughs> Ooh. 
Mm, uh, could it be on the roof? <laughs> yeah, well, actually, that was what I was going to say. If we, if we, yeah, either way, like if we do get outside, either like out front or the roof or wherever, then I, I would, I, that's, I would think of a way to like summon the ornithopter and that would, we could make so our escape that then, way. Theoretically, if I had an asset now, could I make it like rooftop access? <laughs> Uh, it's a little bit trickier. Uh, you pretty much have to get your way to the street. If you can get your way to the street, okay. you're safe. Okay. Yeah, I would imagine that they've locked down all these uh, these top floors as they're trying to uh, figure out what happened here. It's a murder scene. Okay. Well, okay. So uh, Aurelius is going to step out and uh, he sees the, the new guard approaching and he says, I understand that this must seem very confusing to you, but please, let me try to explain. And I'm going to try to buy time for uh, for someone to kill him. <laughs> All right, well, here's what I'll say. Uh, I'm going to make a difficulty three check for you, and if you succeed, I'll let you keep the initiative for free. Okay. Because if you fail, he's going to attack either Pharos or Corin. Okay. All right, so I'm going to, this is going to be a communicate test. Okay. Uh, I'm going to use my diplomacy focus. And I guess the drive, I would maybe power, like I'm trying to use my abilities to kind of control what he's doing. It's your greatest power is your ability to think and talk. So I like power. I would also think duty works, but but power is good here. Uh, and you have a, uh, a focus of diplomacy and communicate. So anything under your communicate is two scores. You start with 2d20. Is that what you want? You want to yeah. burn some determination? What do you want to do? Oh, man. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm tempted. No, I'm just going to roll. Okay. I'm just going to roll. Okay, so yeah, I'm gonna say, no, please, you see, what happened was this poor man fell ill and we were only trying to help him. This is how nice we are and how student. <laughs> okay, uh, oh, okay, uh, I got a 15 uh, and a three. So I got one crit, so that's two successes. Two successes, uh, you pass. I will put you uh, uh, out there, actually, uh, yeah, that's fine. You, uh, you are now able to act again, and because all of you have acted, you can decide who takes the action here. Um, you want to try the voice again? I don't know what to tell him to do. Uh, more than anything, but... <laughs> but it only lasts, like, the trance that you put them under only lasts for, like, a certain amount of time, right? It's a, mm. it's a brief thing. It's not specified, but they do something that they think, w I'm just going off of, you know, lore, they do something that they think was their idea. So right. it's really just getting them to do the task and then the task is done. But See, maybe this was, or this the task is walk outside. Out. Or whack him. <laughs> Corn's like, but kill people though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or violence. I, yeah. <laughs> Well, this um, was my this was my plan that I was initially going to suggest, and the less I actually did something very close to this, I was going to say use the voice on the guard and say, "Go ask the other guard if he wants to make out." <laughs> now there are three possible outcomes of that. He goes down there and says, "Hey, do you want to make out?" And the other guy is like, <clears throat> "What the fuck are you talking about? It's super awkward. That buys us plenty of time." <laughs> uh, or, uh, well, I guess two outcomes. Or they start making out, and then we have unlimited time. And then there's no violence. Like we it's can't very be accused dunes, of like this it's is very brilliant. <laughs> I will again reach within the depths of what I've now accumulated in knowledge about this new guard. <laughs> and I would like to say Seduce the downstairs guard. <laughs> right, I hope it works. Honestly, well, that yeah. would give us more time. I, I really time. just hope it works for for their sakes, it sounds like a great time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is a win-win situation. We're yeah. just helping. We're moving things this along. Guy a favor. Yeah. It's win -win. I didn't say which downstairs gone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, invite yeah. me to the wedding later, jerk. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and you know, I'm giving him free reign to choose left or right, whichever he's more attracted right. to. Uh, okay. I'm using my focus of matchmaker to... <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's gonna be communicate and power, right? 
That's what we yes. used last time? Yes. Uh, all right, and your communicate focus won't hit, but you can use your, your other power if you want. Um, I'm going to say... Uh, I'm going to say three successes again, but I'm not going to use threat to make it four. Okay. Uh, what do you all think I should do with my one for one, give him threat for successes? Um... I only have two dice currently, and we need three successes, so I guess I do need to spend one momentum for a third die. Yeah, we do have two momentum sitting there, so... Yeah, go for it. Yeah, I'd, buy, I'd just buy a third, third die. Like, he already mm-hmm. has six threat. That's, that's, like a, that's a lot of threat, so... Okay, like so no threat. Threat. I will just roll these three dice, and they will all be below 16. Absolutely. Okay. okay. And what did you do to get the third die? Uh, spent one momentum. Ah, okay, perfect. Uh, so now you guys are out of momentum. Uh, oh, oh, no, have one. I only spent one. Oh, okay, yeah, great. So have you have one. one momentum left, six threat. Uh, let's see what happens. Four, three, and 14. Oh! oh. So you, you had to have rolled under a focus there, right? Yeah, that twice. Yeah. So I think five communicate, successes. Does, I does, did. does your communicate have a focus that's relevant? Inspiration. Uh, I think oh. actually this, uh, more so than the fighting the other guard, I- I'm giving them the inspiration to fall in love. You know what? I like it. And you guys desperately need some momentum. <laughs> Thank so you, Troy. that would be... Uh, so two were below. F- yeah, so five successes. So you'll generate two points of momentum. Nice. Yes. You got three. So now That's you have awesome. three yes, momentum. I've made up for my previous use of the voice. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Now here's the thing. Guy. You can spend two momentum or give two threat to now be able to move as well because you guys are doing all this from the open door of the holding room. Pharos is the only one that's been able to move out. Um, So it's up to you if you want to spend two momentum to to take this opportunity to move out here or give two threat to move out or whatever you want to do. I don't think it's... you, You tell me if I'm wrong. I don't think you guys want to spend anything to keep the initiative here. I think you probably want to let this guy start making his move. So that's yeah. my intention. He's going to start going down uh, to the stairwell. Um, but it's up to you if you want to spend two momentum or give two threat to also move into the hallway. Delessa. Oh, um, okay. So just looking at these uh, quick notes you gave us, mm-hmm. on our turn, we can move ourselves, but we've already taken the we, asset. Right, uh, this, you've done yeah. your action, which was the voice. But if you well, want to move Will you let us all well, move? I'll let you move, but it costs two momentum or two threat. Got it. But we can move as a group. Sure. Okay. Let's get you out into the hallway. Let's spin the momentum. Yeah. Okay. Great. Okay. All right. So I'm going to say with that one momentum spend, I'm just going to get you guys all in the hallway here because you've you've made a big move here. And in fact, that will move things forward in time where this guard is now. And you're like, hey, what? Uh, I don't want to make out of you. Well... <laughs> Maybe I do. Uh, <laughs> you can hear that echoing up the stairwell. Do you roll for that? <laughs> it's happening off stage. Uh, I want to follow those guys. I know. <laughs> that's, this is a more interesting story. That's what story. the second half of this adventure is that Jared runs. It's their, <laughs> their <laughs> touring love affair. Yes. Uh, tell me what the plan is here now. Okay, you've you've created your you've created a situation where you've eliminated one guard and sent another guard down. It won't be long before he comes to his senses and is like, uh, I don't want to do this. Uh, are you? Do you want to go down there where they're arguing, or you want to go there in the direction of there just being one guard? Hmm. I was thinking that's tricky if because they if they're making out. out, yeah. Yeah, we don't want we to bother goodbye. them. I or think we... that because it's riskier, and I like it. It is riskier. I was gonna say, it, I, I think it might make more sense to go to the what where the because then we only have one guard to deal with on the other stairwell and we can figure out a way to do that uh or yeah or we can hope that they're suitably distracted and just move past them on the other side maybe let the positive goodwill we've created in the universe by making these two potentially find love just be enough for us and we don't need to follow them i'm <laughs> yeah, down to, if you want to go the other way I'll, i'm with you aurelius you are my advisor i mean i'd love to i'd love to see it more than anyone i mean I'm just thinking of your welfare. You just hear a lot of yelling. Place. What? No, I don't, maybe. <laughs> right, it's not going that well. I don't think it's going that well. Hearing it's not going well, I'm just going to start going towards the, the less occupied downstairs stairwell uh, and then hope that me being a leader will cause them all to follow. 
Okay, All forgive right, me so, if this okay. is being me- meta e, but I, in in Ferris's kind of stratagem that kicked this off was that he would try to create some sort of uh, chaos on the on the in the in the west of the building to draw attention away from the east, thus allowing uh, uh, the rest of the crew to move through. And also, I know that the that the, my current form is a known quantity on the side that we're attempting to um, oh. leave now. So, not to be Johnny splits the party, but I but <laughs> Pharaohs might might go down the other way past past the makeout patrol. Well, you could make it though. You could you could totally do that on your own and make that's, it by unscathed in your current form. So yeah. I think that's the idea. Is I'll try to I'll try to reconnect with you. Uh, oh, I like it. We'll meet in the lobby. We'll meet in the lobby. <laughs> I Part like of me it. Wants to follow your lead, let you go first, uh, as a as a distraction of sorts. Yeah, I mean, I, it's it's tricky, right? Because the, this commotion in the stairwell provides an opportunity uh, for Pharaohs to probably go by unnoticed. But the three of you may be like, wait, what's going on here? And the voice could run off, run out, and now you've got to deal with two guards. There's something interesting mm-hmm. about Pharaohs trying to get out on his own uh, and the three of you dealing with that one guard, depending on how you want to move, if you want to attack. But it's up to you guys. Yeah, yeah. Split kinda, the party. Yeah. Let's what split. could go wrong? Let's split the party. Um, <laughs> Number one let's, rule: always great, split let, the party. Let's do it. Let's All do right. it. Let's say this is a new round then, um, because everyone else has been handled. So move or use an asset. Who wants to go first? Are you then going to keep the initiative? Talk me through this. Uh, I think I would move towards that stairwell just to catch what if there's any danger. I'm the first to catch it. Okay, so you can move for free into that stairwell, or you could move boldly to try and attract the attention of the uh, of the uh, the guy at the bottom of the stairs, or push him into the restaurant if you <laughs> succeed. Because if you succeed on moving boldly, you can either draw him one thing to you, or push him away further into the restaurant. Hmm. What do you think, guys? Uh, boldly. Bold? Now, Let's if you fail, it. you cannot keep the initiative, and one enemy moves towards you. Let's do it. Boldly. Okay. Boldly. Boldly Moving go. boldly. Into That's going to be stairwell. difficulty two, and you know what? I'll spend a threat to make it difficulty three. <laughs> oh, <yay. laughs> okay. We did give you all that threat to spend. I got to use it or lose it, right? <laughs> right. Um, It'd be reckless right. not to. You mm-hmm. can't take it with you. So that is going to be a move action, excuse me, move skill, and you tell me what drive you like for this. I feel like it is my duty to protect the party Mm -hmm. and get us out of here. That is my, so let's let's go with, uh, let's go with duty as a sharp blade. (laughs) Okay, Uh, yeah, it may come to that for you. So what is, do you have a focus and move? In move? Yeah. I do not. Okay, so. It's, oh, wait, I do. It's uh, stealth. Ooh. Okay, yeah. You're doing so, because I want to hear if this succeeds, how you're getting this guy to either move towards you or move away from you. So I'll allow stealth. And what is your move score? My move score is a six. All right, so six or under is two successes, and you have two d20. Are you happy with that? Yes. Wait, okay. don't you have to get three? She does. Oh, I, She's what? Cocky. I have to get three successes? Yeah, I burned yeah. a threat to make it three. Who? Difficulty three. Uh, but we have so, another momentum, or we have... We, we, we have do. two now, Where right? are we on momentum? We have two? I think, I think you have two. two momentum. Yeah. Yeah, so we spend one to keep the initiative. Spend and, one, yeah. 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 yeah, don't be afraid to spend it. Um, yeah. You guys just need to start generating more of it. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. okay. I'll, I'll, I'll spend it but then, you can generate too. it by spending it, which is fine. Right. Yes. I think that's what I'm going to do. You gotta spend momentum and make momentum, baby. That's, right. yeah. that's the process. That's the, it's one. Look. the rule of the game. Uh, uh, momentum, so no problem. Look, look. Three dice. <laughs> momentum, no problem. Uh, all right, three successes is what you need. You're rolling three d20s. Anything under a six counts twice. Okay. I rolled a two, an yes. eight, and an 11. Okay, nice. that is four successes. Four successes. Boom. So you succeed. You gain that momentum back immediately. Woo. Yes. Now, 
Tell me what you want to do. If you want to draw him towards you, or if you want to push him into the restaurant and explain to me how you're doing this. So if I put, because we're we're eventually trying to get into the restaurant and out the lobby, if right. we are going this way, correct? Right. Mm-hmm. And what you know from what Deso Ren told you, uh, the they've just gone back. All the nobles are in there dining and eating, and they've just like, oh, oh, those petty minor houses and them and them murders. Good riddance. And so they're all sitting in there. You push the guard in there. You know, it, you're gonna have to deal with that anyways. But it's yeah. a totally different scene than sneaking down a stairwell. I push. I almost. You think push? Because I would think about more like draw him to me, take him out, and ho- hopefully escape through the restaurant, just like whistling. Yeah, I think act that casual. We <laughs> haven't killed him. anyone yet. <laughs> We're still innocent in or terms of the law. Him. Okay. <laughs> Draw him in, but try to knock him out. All right, well, here's the thing, is where you already used your action, what you can try to do is spend two momentum or give two threat to keep the initiative so someone else can deal with it, but you've already spent your action. I don't know if you can spend momentum to immediately go again. Yeah, I don't think I can, but... uh, So so your action is to bring him in, and then we do something to deal with him. Yes. Because I feel like causing a commotion in the restaurant might be a bad idea. Another thing you can do is... It could be funny, though. It could be really funny. It could be really Mm -hmm. funny. It could be Uh, funny. But maybe the dice decides. Another thing you can do is create a trait or an asset with your momentum, which is, uh, you know, I don't know what you do here. It's like, create a, a, grab a blanket and cover yourself. (laughs) You don't want to see it. I like your idea of manipulating the the lights. Yeah, yeah, the uh, the traits of the stairwells are poorly wit- lit and winding. Oh. Oh. Ooh. Skid, you were thinking something? I was thinking, like, if we get, maybe there we could buy a trait in the hallway, or, or a trait or an asset, where it's like the controls for the lights of the restaurant are in the stairway. <gasps> so yes. we can turn them out and then make our escape in the darkness. Oh. I love it. Great. Okay, okay. Uh, that'll be uh, two momentum or two threat um, to create, say, at the bottom of the stairs is a way to control the lighting in the restaurant. Yeah, it's kind of a breaker switch switch box or something. I like it. Yeah. It's an asset of quality zero. Uh, what do you want to do, momentum or threat? I think you have two momentum, we've got, right? We've got three. You got three, all right. Yeah, so. Oh, wait, no. No, we have two. Um, I think we spin them. I love that idea. Yeah, let's go yeah. for it. Okay, great. All right, so you're down to uh, no momentum and uh, X amount of threat. I can't remember. Uh, But that is very, very smart here. No point in uh, keeping the initiative, I don't think. This guy comes up, though, and sees Corrin. I think we had five threat now because you just want one to make that roll more difficult. Producer, if you know, please put it in the uh, Skype chat. Uh, Five threat, five threat. Okay, great. Uh, so let's see here. So this guy gets pulled in and sees you, and it's like, hey, now it would be his turn to act unless you guys want to spend more momentum or give more threat to try and take the initiative. Or do you want to just let Corrin take it? I'll fight him. Let's right. see. Should we see what he does? And then. Yeah. React instead of React keep giving Troy threat. Yeah. yeah. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah. yeah let's see. Like you might learn corn's handy in a fight. Yeah. Let's stop I took rapid recovery. I'm ready. And, uh, yeah. Let me ask you this, Corin. What did you do to draw him up the stairs? What was your like narrative thing? Like, hey, hey, you. <laughs> uh, I think what I would have done is taken the edge of my Chris knife and scrape it across the wall. Mm. Oh. Well, you have <laughs> to draw blood now. But he hears the sound of the scraping just just a few feet up those stairs. And okay. it's too close to be the hallway where he came from. So peculiar. So Maybe he you looks, should go check it out. Yeah, he looks up the winding staircase and because of the way it winds, he can't see, but he's like, the hell is that? He draws his dagger uh, and starts walking up and then he sees you standing there in this dimly lit top of the stairwell said how did you get out you're supposed to be in there 
maybe he even looks down the hallway and sees your companions and says, oh, oh, you're as good to me dead as alive. And he goes to try and stab you. And he gets two successes. So because you are a major character, this isn't enough to defeat you. However, with his quality zero knife, that adds zero to his two successes. This is two successes that go towards an extended task of trying to take you out. What is your battle score? My battle score is an eight. Okay, so he has to score eight successes to successfully defeat you, which he could do throughout the course of this if you don't take him out. But he has struck you, and now you're in a fight. Okay. Delessa, Aurelius, or Pharos, who would like to go? I have an idea. Oh, go for it. I would like to step up behind him and use my final talent, a mask of power. Jeez. I can in- intimate that I know more than you than I do about my enemy's secrets. And I would like to say, move again, and the Harkonnens will find your betrayal, and they will execute you. I want to get him to freeze where he is, and then I'm going to instruct him to set down his knife and count to a thousand. (laughs) Okay, okay. This would allow you plenty of time to either take him out or just walk right past him. If you succeed on this check, uh, it'll it'll effectively take him out long enough for you to all descend the stairwell. So we got to make it a tough check, right? What are we using here? Is this command uh, discipline or communicate? Oh, this is command. This yes. is command. All right, so you're using your 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 inner uh, willpower, your strength to uh, channel this into this guy to tell him to drop his weapon. Uh, duty, power, power, right? Well, um, I'm not using a Benny Gesserit conditioning skill. I'm just using my my powers of negotiation and this like uh, uh, pretending I have blackmail when I don't. So I think it's truth because my statement is. Mm. The purpose of argument is to change the nature of truth. I like Ah, it. I like that a lot. Um, Okay, so discipline and truth. And discipline has the focus of command. What's your discipline score? Seven. Okay, I'm only going to make a difficulty three. Um, If you roll under seven, those are two successes. This is a great chance to not only succeed, but to gain some momentum. Okay, so I'm, I I would like to give him one more threat to roll with three dra- dice, if you all are okay with that. I need to roll a 13 or below. Okay. But anything below a seven is going to be double. Okay, yes. so giving one threat. Giving one, one threat. Die. 3d20. Let's see what we get. Got it. Okay, we have a four, so that's yes. two successes. A 10 which is just a regular success, and a 13, which is just on the line. So four successes. Wow. I needed three. We gain one momentum. Nice. Huge. 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 Great. And so, Corin, this guy comes up, stabs at you, hits you, um, but you're tough. Uh, And then she says something, and he just freezes and drops the knife. Well, he freezes and drops the knife, but not only have I been hit, but my blade has been drawn. Oh no. So yes. <laughs> I'm taking his life. Coin, no. I think that's pretty clear. Uh, gee, it's not even your turn, but I want to see I want to see this go down. Roll a uh, battle or whatever you want to use here to end him. Uh, yeah, it would be battle. Uh, battle and power. Battle and power, yeah. It's okay. too late. He's just staring yep. at you. Uh, uh, uh. I rolled a three and a four. Oh, <laughs> so four successes, and I mean, you just you end his life. Awesome, just like decapitate him. Dum dum dum. The head rolls down the stairs, and you and gain you two the- momentum. Man, as he and falls, he's- you see me standing behind where he was, having just whispered in his ear. And I look very disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's sorry, come my lady. Back to Bruce. And as like there's still blood on it, I'll sheath my knife with blood still all over it. 
Uh, Pharos and Aurelius, you still have yet to go. Uh, obviously, there are those two guys still arguing, but you have a clear stairwell now um, leading to the restaurant. Uh, Pharos would still like to go down the stairwell where they're arguing, but I will move stealthily. Okay, that is a difficulty two. Uh, do you have a focus in move? I don't. Okay, uh, then you just roll move, and what uh, drive do you like here? Um, I am again. I, I'm good duty. I'm trying to trying to get people out. So yeah. this is this is. I'm putting myself at risk to uh, for the good of the of the many. So do you have a drive an, statement? For duty? I don't. So I don't, don't have a drive statement, and I don't have a focus statement in this. All right. What is your total? You're trying to roll under eleven. Okay. You need two successes to move subtly. All right. Here we go. Um, if I don't have a statement in that focus, do, if I roll under it, is it still a crit? No. Okay. No, you have to have a, a focus and a skill for it to be. I rolled two successes, a nine and a four. Okay. So not only do you move into that empty stairwell, but you get to keep the initiative for free to either attempt another check at a plus one difficulty or allow Aurelius to go. Um, I will... Uh... I will allow Aurelius to go. Okay. And I will just say, because of the situation here, because of the way that you've manipulated these guards, taken some out, knocked some out, all three of you can act on Aurelius's turn if your plan is to just move down there. It's kind of yeah, like a group uh, action. Could it, before we head down, like uh, as an action, would I be able to, because we did knock one unconscious. Yes. Would I be able to, and he was carrying a knife, I wanted to wet his blade with the blood from my knife and kind of set him near the other guard that was dead to make it look like he did it. Okay. Um, Love that. Then you cool. know what we're gonna do is we're gonna make that an action for you. And really the whole point of it is it's just gonna kind of keep you a little bit behind your party. Okay. I'm gonna keep moving with Aurelius as I don't say anything, but uh, Corin knows. I didn't want to spill blood this day. Okay, yeah. Aurelius, what are you thinking here? Aurelius, he comes into the hallway and sees what's happening. Like, oh, oh, how horrid! <laughs> yeah, she's just. The, I think it's just like barbarian can't control herself one bit. This puts us behind the eight ball, and he is going to lead the way down the rest of the stairs. He knows where this switch box is. Mm -hmm. And that's his intention. He's going to go down leading his duchess. And then once Corrin catches up, then he's going to turn off the lights. Okay, great. You know, while, while you're still in this conflict, I'm, I'm, I'm playing a little fast and loose with the timing of these things here because you've eliminated your immediate uh, sort of obstacles. Going into the restaurant, dealing with these two guards in the stairwell, going into the great salon, and then of course the lobby, those are gonna have their own uh, problems. So let's go back to Pharos then. Mm -hmm. Pharos, what is your move here? As you move into the stairwell, you hear arguing, uh, echoing up the winding staircase. Great, uh, yeah, I continue to move uh, subtly down into the stairwell. Okay, give me a uh, difficulty two move check. Okay. And I failed both. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> fail both. Okay. Oh, well, no. but I, I didn't. I didn't critically fail. But yeah. Okay. The only uh, major issue with that is that you cannot keep the initiative, and so I'll say the what results from that is that the voice power wears off. Okay. And that guy is like, "I'm sorry, I don't want to kiss you." Well, I do, but it has nothing to do with the. Well, we'll talk later. <laughs> and now. It comes back to either Corin, Aurelius, or Delessa. So, I'm, I'm sorry, does that also mean I didn't effectively move? So I'm now not in that stair, the, the next level of the stairwell with them? Uh, that's an excellent question. Uh, if you failure means you cannot spend momentum on additional movement. No, I think you can still move into there. Okay. Doesn't it mean that you, you succeed with a complication, basically? Like, even if you... 
basically Doesn't like happen. one enemy gets to move and you can't keep the initiative so i substituted the enemy moving for the voice being dropped out of him and now he's got gotcha. to his senses okay cool. um, but i'm but now yeah, in that room with you them. can then move into the stairwell and okay. they are uh still kind of bickering but they look at you and like why haven't you gone yet mm -hmm. did you change your clothes i <laughs> It seems as though you both could afford such a luxury. Am I being detained for slipping into something more comfortable? <laughs> <laughs> this is an interesting pickle here. Uh, Corin, Aurelius, and Delessa. Corin, you decided to go back to uh, pin the murder on the other guard here. So you're yep. a little bit behind and uh, I'm gonna make you pay for it by having to catch up in initiative order. Uh, do you wanna go first or D Delessa, I guess Delessa and Aurelius are waiting for you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know that we are. I think that we're trying to flip the lights in the restaurant. I know that Aurelius said that he was gonna wait for me. Oh, previously. sorry, I missed that. I don't know, but if you change your mind, let me know. <laughs> no, 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 I missed that. <laughs> cool, okay. Yeah, so what I want to do, Corin, is I really just want to see how fast you can get down there and if it causes any problems or okay. if you're able to generate momentum for your team. All right, can I just sprint down yeah. there? Yeah, I'll, I'll count it as a move boldly, but the bonus I'm going to give you is if you succeed, you can move all the way down to them and catch up in one turn. Okay. Uh, so make that a difficulty two check, but you know what? I'll spend a threat and make it difficulty three. There's okay. blood all over the stairs. You might slip and fall. Yeah. She's um, done this before. She can handle it quickly. <laughs> um, so I, I'm gonna use my, I guess, am I using a skill focus in this um, for my you're move? Gonna use or move. Am I using move? Yeah, okay. you're gonna use move and then, uh, I don't know, duty seems right, but you can talk me into something else. Uh, I think duty seems right. It's not my highest, but it does seem right. So I wanna go with that. Um, yeah. Those are both sixes. Okay, and Ooh, uh, I want to make an argument for your power because your statement power attracts those who are corruptible. Am I being corrupted? I might be being corrupted. The power that these guards had is what corrupted them to kill each other. Um, it's a stretch. Could be. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I'm wondering if, like, I'm seeing our, you know, our need to, for survival right now is higher than anything. And if this is like, to solidify the power of House Huda, then uh, maybe, maybe drawing blood and, and getting that sense of power is making me a little power hungry, a little bit corruptible. Okay, so let's, let's play around with the mechanics here. And I'll say that it, what you're doing kind of goes against who you are. And so do you want to comply with your drive, gain a point of determination and get a complication? Or do you want to change your worldview and uh, deal with the crossing out this drive and changing it later? Ooh. Both will net you a point of determination. But in this moment, in this desperate moment, something about you is, is changing. I, I'm feeling the, the power, the, the, the sense of uh, agency here. So. Yeah, maybe I'll have to change it. Okay. If I'm, yeah. Go ahead okay. and cross out that drive, gain a point of determination, which will certainly help you. I don't know if you want to spend it here or not, but you need three successes and if you succeed, it'll be enough to get you downstairs to your friends. Okay, so then am I rolling two dice then? Two, two dice uh, and you have a, a focus and move of stealth, but you might want to, you might want to buy another. It's up to you. Yeah, well, let's do it. Okay. Spend the momentum. Yeah. Buy a, a die. You've got 3d20. Okay. Oof. Okay, I rolled a five and then two 17s. Oh. Ooh. Okay. So the five netted you two successes, but unfortunately that's not enough. So. Why don't you spend determination and reroll the two 17s? <gasps> yes, you can do that. Yes, let Ooh. me do that. I can reroll re -roll both of them or just one? Both of them. Uh, determination. Reroll any or all dice. Yep. Okay. Oh, dang. Uh, I rolled a one and a 14. Oh, Ooh, hell yeah. yeah. Oh, beautiful. It was the 14 of success as well? I believe so. It, yes. Okay. Because awesome. it needs it, beats it. Yeah, and you gain one okay. point of momentum. 
So you get Sweet. the momentum that you spent back, and now you're in that bottom stairwell with Aurelius and Delessa. Aurelius, you're standing right near Ooh. that fuse box. You see Corin come down. What do you do? Uh, the minute I see her, and I say, 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 are you prepared, your grace? Flip it. Chunk. Turn the lights off. And you just hear, ah, glasses shattering as lights go out in the room ahead of you, the restaurant. Can we also flip them for the great salon? Oh, well, that sounds a little greedy. I think you would know the way that this was built. Pharos is near the light switch for a great salon. Yes, of course. Uh, so I think uh, that is maybe what I would like to do. Okay. <laughs> now, those guys are right there watching you. Of course How do they you want are. to try and pull this off? Um, so maybe... If, if this is the timing is working, uh, it might, it's the like, am I being dangerous for uh, slipping into something more comfortable? Shunk. Ah, screams like, mm mm. I'm sorry, gentlemen. Sounds like duty is calling. And uh, mm. seeing if they if they react to the to the screams coming from uh, coming from the other side of the building. Yeah, the restaurant sounds are coming all the way in. Uh, if, if, assuming they're coming through the salon. Yep. What uh, what do you want to try and do here to shut off these lights? I would like to actually shut them off, but I think I might like to do it out of sight of them. So I think first I'd like to convince them to go to 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 move out of this room, maybe towards the now dark restaurant. Okay, that's going to be communicate and uh, whatever drive you like, power, truth. Great, I um communicate for sure and uh, a truth. Uh, belief is a lever. Truth is a weapon. Mm -hmm. um, okay. What they believe is the lever I am pushing. Okay. Um, great. Here we go. And uh, I'm I'm going to be using my hidden motives here, also. So if they fail this understand or communicate test, I get to create a trait in them. Okay. Communicate six. Truth seven. That is two successes. Nice. Okay. That is enough. And what I'll do is I'll say, instead of them rolling against it, uh, that you are able to create the trait that you want to create in them. Great. Uh, the trait that they, um, immediately is that I am harmless. Okay. And if you're harmless, they're not paying attention to you. Exactly. Uh, what do you say to them to try and make them leave? Sounds like duty is calling, gentlemen. Uh... All right, so one of the guys looks at the other guy. He's like, you go. I'll make sure everything's fine upstairs. So one guy moves up towards the stairwell. One guy moves into the great salon. And I don't know if this is like getting into initiative cheating, but then, then I throw the lights on the salon. <laughs> That's fine. I'm going to say that the trait that you are, the asset you created before created a duplicate asset on this side. Um and you're able to uh, free action, shut that off. So the lights in the great salon and the restaurant are completely out and you just hear like screams and, and shouting. There's still pandemonium happening from the murder, especially in the great salon, a little more refined in the restaurant, but now you have an actual opportunity to get to the lobby. Let's go back to uh, the Duchess. I would like to give the plan the order to Aurelius and Corin that the three of us will, uh, even though the lights are off, we will split up in three different directions. And I give intricate hand signals to to give this command. And uh, I instruct them to go to the sides of the room towards the lobby as all goes straight down the middle. And I would like to use my Prana Bindu to walk as delicately and quietly as possible so I am completely undetected. Okay. All right. So you want, this is going to be move, right? Or discipline? This is going to be, um, I think this is move. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, oh, and sorry. Then... I, I was kind of considering, well, okay. When I attempt a move or discipline test using Pranabendu conditioning, I, I can get a, a reroll of a single D20 hmm. if needed. Okay. Um, as I perfectly control my breathing, heart rate, internal organs. So, um, 
I, I would like to do discipline. Okay, I like it. Um, and the discipline you're trying to do is you're just trying to move unnoticed through this crowd, avoiding the commotion of people uh, in the dark. Uh, the the tr the trait the restaurant had was formal, but you guys have created the trait of uh, chaotic um, by shutting off the lights, and the Great Salon would have that as well. The difference is the Great Salon was also loud and crowded, so now it's loud, crowded, dark, and chaotic. The restaurant <laughs> is... Uh, the formal's gone, and now it's just dark and chaotic. Uh, so go ahead and give me that uh, that roll, and let's, let's see uh, what comes up. What's the difficulty? I'm gonna, I'm gonna say okay. difficulty a uh, 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 flat one because you've you've lowered the difficulty by shutting off the lights. Excellent. Okay, uh, so I'll just use the regular two, and I'll I can get a reroll if I need. Um, for my drive, can I use justice? I'll protect those in my care. Yes. Yeah, because okay. that's what you're doing here. Okay. Your so Your safety 14. is one thing, but you're trying to make everybody else get out safely as well. Six and five. Ooh. So well, those, those are. Two successes, so we gain a momentum. Is that, what is it? Two or three momentum? You use discipline? I did. Okay. But my focus is command, so it doesn't so work. It doesn't fit. Okay, but two successes, so you succeed and gain a momentum. Uh, and I will say that you succeed by moving into the restaurant undetected. Aurelius, Corin, Pharos, who wants to go? Uh, Aurelius will go. What Aurelius wants to do is he's going to use his Mind Palace talent to perfectly recall the layout of the restaurant so that even at all the tables and everything, so that even in the dark he can maneuver efficiently. And he is going to use his grace focus in his move skill to try to move across without disturbing anyone. I love it. Without nice. being detected. I imagine he was like, no detail of the opera house went unnoticed by Aurelius. He has yeah. every floor plan. Schematic. Yeah. It's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. A beautiful yeah. mind. I he's love eaten in this restaurant, probably. Like, yeah. He's, oh, yeah. he's been here. So. Uh, all right. So slide through in the dark here. Uh, give me that roll. I'm going to say uh, be also difficulty one because of the, the lowered lights. Okay. Give you an opportunity for some momentum here. Uh, okay, I got one success. I got a 19 and a 7. Okay, uh, you uh, basically have the same result as Delessa, just done in a completely different way. Whereas she used her Pranabindu conditioning, you used your uh, memory of the layout. Yeah, uh, just kind of switching through in his layered robes. It's kind of like dodging, like without, with barely moving, like dodging, mm -hmm. uh, uh, s scattering waiters and patrons. You guys are, you and uh, Delessa are one away from the lobby, but Pharos and Corrin are still a little bit further behind. Um, keep in mind, whatever actions you take, if you decide to move, you can spend two momentum or give two threat to then move again, if you want to just speed through to get to the lobby. You can right. also create assets and other stuff, but now it seems like you've, you're so close, you just want to get out. Corrin, Pharos, who wants to go? I definitely want to speed through. Okay. Um, then give me a move check, difficulty one, and then if you want to spend two momentum, I'll get you'll get right into the lobby as long as you succeed yes. on that check. So we're thinking move stealthily, so you get yeah. your focus and duty. I think so. Yeah. Mm hmm. Okay. Show me and what you got. And then am I spending? So you roll this first, you need to get one success, okay. and then you'll spend the two momentum to move into the lobby. I rolled a seven and a 10. Okay, and what's your move score? My move score is a six. Six, all right, so that's two successes, right? Uh, Cause yes. yeah, that's two successes. Uh, and so you generate a point of momentum, and then you're going to spend two momentum to move into the lobby. Yes. Now, when you get into the lobby, lobby I would say at this point, people are filing out of the great salon. People are filing out of the restaurant. And there's other chaos there from like the the people that were still there for the murder investigation. So if the trait was chaotic, now it's chaotic too. It's also very spread out in there. But one thing you do see standing at the doorway, like right near the doorway is Fenton Quill and standing next to him is the adjudicator. Oh. But you are in the lobby and there's a lot going on and you moved stealthily, so you feel as if you're not seen. But one okay. false move, bad news. 
Pharos. I, um, Pharos, I think I'll take this opportunity, and I feel like we maybe, Troy, we may have to invent a, a face dance mechanic just Please. to make sure I'm not cheating this way. I've invented but, um, 90% of what we've done so far. <laughs> <laughs> but I'd like to, um, I think, uh, um, in, now that the uh, guards have moved away from Pharos, once again, uh, he, like, shifts and alters, and I'll, 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 I mean, I'll spend a point of momentum maybe to create the asset of having seen a elderly patrician woman, and that is what I look like now. Okay, okay, I like that. And that's great if you happen to run into these guards again, they won't be questioning or whatnot. Uh, all right, so you take on that, and then uh, you want to slide into the room as a yes. free action? Yes, okay. indeed. Great, so you are now uh, an elderly woman and you slide into the great salon and as you do, you just feel buffeting of bodies uh, Excuse rushing me. past you. Excuse me, young man. <laughs> as I, as I, as I, uh, push, where is the manager here? As I push, push through. Uh, I noticed Aurelia, uh, Aurelius and Delessa just slid their asses right in the lobby. <laughs> you get back there, oh. you're not there yet. Oh. <laughs> uh, did it work? Nice try. Uh, it's so stealthy but though. It, it does come back to you. In fact, it's now a brand new round, so in any order you guys can go, you're very close here. Pharos, Delessa, and Aurelius could do a move, spend momentum or give threat, move again to get outside. Uh, if you want to, and then obviously Corin is only one step away. Um, I rendezvous okay. with Aurelius at the door of the restaurant, uh, and just kind of look at him with a like let's let's pray this works kind of look. Uh, I, I'm out of plans. Okay, I think in this case, I realize I just moved last. Would I have to to? Uh, I think this might be the the diversion that I'm kind of that that Ferris is improvising. If I can move through the salon and see the lobby, I'd like to make a beeline to Fenton Quill. <laughs> okay, uh, so you can free move into the lobby if you want. Uh, because of the darkness, I'm not gonna ch charge you uh, or put difficulty on that. Uh, and uh, yeah, you wanna you wanna just go right up to Fenton Quill? Yep. Okay, so this and little lady- And I want lady... to engage him so that the others can slip by while I approach this um, Arconan functionary. And he sees you uh, coming and just kind of looks down his nose and says, Young man! Uh, uh, young man! What? I have been a patron of this opera house. My family has been for two centuries. I expect better than being than being wrangled like like a piece of off-world chattel when 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 minor inconveniences take place in the last portion of a show. Minor inconveniences. I, is murder. My my great 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 grandmother was in the very first production of Escape uh, and Felicity in the Seraglio. So I would hope that I could at least stay for a curtain call. <laughs> Is there someone that I could speak to who's perhaps um, uh, in, in a higher position of authority than yourself, or perhaps a, a an address to which a letter might be sent to the management staff? No, I of course know many involved in the board of patronage, but- Giving that is very loud volume, I think Aurelius and I hear what's happening, and I want to continue you that uh, Pranabindu quiet walking. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he's created this distraction uh, and Fenton Quill is just kind of like brushing you off and he's like, ma'am, ma'am, we do not own this opera house. Is this your best? Are you doing your best? Because as, it's not enough. As I said, we do not <laughs> own this opera house. Not yet, at least. Oh. Mm. Oh, wow. Well, I certainly hope that when Mind you palace. do, uh, whoever it is that uh, uh, pulls your strings uh, treats the clientele with more respect than you're showing now. What, what is your name? What, what's you, your name? Would you please leave? He snaps his fingers, and in fact, you've annoyed him enough that right. the guards escort you outside <gasps> and just kind of <laughs> throw you down the stairs. No, they're just Never like, in man, all please my go. years. <laughs> uh... uh could and I Ferris do, is out. Could I create another asset? Spend two momentum, create another asset. Talk to me. I want to create some kind of uh, communication device. Like a, I'm picturing like a princess phone. 
uh, near at the like the Mater D station at the restaurant. Okay. And I would like to call uh, for a ride, either my ornithopter or just a cab or something. Okay. I want to arrange for a pickup. All right, so uh, spend two momentum. Uh, I think you have the momentum. I yeah, think you we do have at this three point. right now. I uh, think so. You spend the momentum and you create the asset of a phone, uh, which they would certainly have at the host stand of this restaurant, to call a cab. Uh, you, in fact, had two momentum. You now have zero momentum. Uh, but I love this. Uh, ring, ring, ring. Hello. Yes, hello. I am calling on behalf of a very important client, and um, we uh, we need an immediate uh, pickup from the uh, opera house, please. Oh, I hear there's a lot of commotion over there. Um, yes, yes. But uh, I assure you that uh, my client will make it worth your while, and oh. then some. All right. Well, then we'll uh, we'll send a car right over. Thank you. And there should be a car arriving soon for you. Uh, that is your action, unless you want to give two threat to move into the lobby. Uh, I, I think that might be smart. Uh, I'm willing to do that. Okay. Aurelius uh, creates the asset of getaway car <laughs> and then gives two threat to then move into the lobby. Uh, Delessa and Corin have still t- to go. I would be waiting definitely to see, make sure that uh, Delessa got out safely before I would move. Yes, you see, uh, well, obviously you wouldn't notice the old lady. In fact, I'm sure you'll all have a lot of questions why Desa Ren was helping you. <laughs> but in the meantime, yeah. you would have would not even have noticed the old lady being escorted out because you have your eyes on the entrance of the restaurant looking for your duchess. Uh, you do see Aurelius slip through. Delessa, what do you do? You know what? Let's keep things interesting. Uh, I, I, could we say that I had slipped into the room as Fenton Quill was distracted by this old woman? Sure. And while in there, I want to slowly move up behind this arbiter. What you? What did you call him? Adjudicator. Adjudicator. Yes, bring her of justice, indeed. I would like to slip behind him, as I so often do, and place my gom jabbar on one side of his neck as I whisper in his ear in the other you have a gom jabbar at your neck there is a poison that will kill you instantly if it brushes against your skin your only option for survival is to step backwards slowly with me through this door and I will keep you safe Okay, so you're doing this, and you hear Fenton. Please, I don't. We, we don't own this opera house, not yet, at least. And you gom jabbar this dude, and he just—he's petrified. He doesn't even move. And you want to kidnap him? him? Well, here's the thing. One of my assets is a hostage, but we never named said hostage, so I thought I'd make one. This oh. is your hostage. Oh, the yeah. adjudicator for House Marconi. That's an impressive hostage. Amazing. That's quite a, especially well, one well. of quality zero. Uh, yeah. All right, so, so court justice, uh, a kidnapping. Of, yeah. That's all right, so, I, I, I love this. It's so uh, wild I'm, and insane. I'm hoping that Fenton Quill, Fenton Quill will not will turn uh, after this commotion and not even know where the adjudicator went if I'm successful. Okay, uh, let's have a check. Let's have a check here. What are we thinking? Oh my. (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) I mean, it sounds like communicate. I would also, uh, with you, I would also allow discipline. Um, I also have battle tactics as a focus. Mm. Yeah, this is- Taking a hostage? Yeah, it could be battle tactics. It's certainly power we're using here, right? Oh, yes. Okay. If you want to do battle and power, that's fine. But, uh... I mean, I'd rather do communicate. That's that's better for me. All right, do uh, communicate unless, and yeah. power. And uh, I've already got some great complications if you're rolling that 20. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there, I've been banking. Whatever do you mean. Okay, that gives me 16. What's the... 
Great Complications difficult. sounds like a store that would be next to Walden Books in an Andy Small. <laughs> oh, he got this for me at Great Complications. Great Complications. <laughs> it's just like a Great Moments dolls, those little angels, except they're very like upset. <laughs> they all have like very looks of consternation on their faces. Angry, next to moments. a store that just sells magic eye paintings. <laughs> <laughs> These stores uh, will be open forever, thought the proprietors. <laughs> <laughs> Here's what we're going to do, just to make things interesting. I'm sitting on seven threat right now to no. your zero momentum. <laughs> I, I'm just, I've got too much threat. My, my pockets are swollen. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is a difficulty two check that I'm going to bump up. I'm going to bump up to difficulty four. Yep. Okay. I'm going now, to spend uh, three no. threat to bump it up to difficulty four. Now we did uh, have a bunch of momentum a moment ago, but we spent it? Yes, you spent it to, to create the asset of the telephone for the getaway car. I right. think we still have one momentum left. I think Joe's- I had four off. written down before that. Did you? I'm, uh, we I'm looking three, at our producer here. We had and, three and I spent two, and then I think we should have one left, but Joe's the final arbiter. Uh, the producer's coming through here with a uh, the final verdict. Um, what say at the arbiter? Let's say it the let's say it the the real adjudicator. Uh, oh, I spent yeah. Uh, Joe was saying I spent it on face change. <laughs> so, uh, okay. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. There was, yeah. Okay. okay. So, but I'm uh, not wrong. The ten minutes ago, we did have four, and that's did. when I You're wrote it down. So okay. right. It goes and I'm fast. I'm so sorry that yes. I spent it. <laughs> it was worth it. I could watch that woman complain all day. She's yes. still complaining on her way down the stairs. <laughs> it got to a free <laughs> movement to the outside. Unhand uh, me, God, my. So my Lessa, joints can't take this manhandling. What is your name? Yeah. I'm gonna get you into the lobby here. Because of the darkness, give me this roll. How do you want to make it work? I'm down to four threats, so you can give me some threat to buy some D20s. Oh, okay. Yes. You got any um, determination, or did you spend it already? I spent my one on on that very almost sure thing that I failed. Uh, Is there a on. drive statement statement that you want to conflict with or comply with? Because you'll gain a determination back in doing it. Okay, I think I. My power statement is the Bene Gesserit will control the Imperium. And I think this may be an aggressive move for the Bene Gesserit, but this is uh, surely potentially corrupting an Arbiter for the Harkonnen is a big power play. So I think this is a, I think this is a hard comply. And, you know, I'm willing to take that big complication. Yeah, well, here's the thing is that statement if this fails, you will bring uh, a sea of controversy around the Bene Gesserit. They will not be taking over the Imperium. If you fail in this mission, if you kill an adjudicator, uh, if you get framed for this murder and it succeeds, it will bring shame upon the Bene Gesserit. So I think that we're, we're playing around a little bit enough here to say that you can challenge it, gain a point of determination, and take the complication. Uh, I'll take the determination, but that uh, is not going to give me more dice. So I do have to give you two threat to have a, a hope at this. Okay. Okay. So I'm giving you two threat. So now you're at six. Well, nine, you want to give me either one or three, three threat because oh, one shoot. one threat yes. gets you one die. Two more threat gets you the second die. I gotta get this hostage. If y'all don't mind, it's I'm huge. gonna spin the three. All right, so spend three threat gets me back up to seven. You now oh. have four die. You have a point of determination, which you can use to either reroll or make something automatic one. And you're using communicate? Or dis I'm using, uh, yes, this was communicate and power, so that's 16. Okay, but you don't have a focus in communicate that would work, right? All right, four die. You need four successes. You have a point of determination. Natural one counts as two successes. Okay, we'll get natural ones. Here we this go. This is gonna be tough. And I, am I in this zone or I, I left this zone? Uh, I would say that a success here is gonna allow you to get right out because I'm not moving these no, assets me, but around. But am I, am I in the same zone as she is right now? Yes, you are. Okay, all right. Okay. Yeah, so you can use your power if you need to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To help her. Oh boy. Big roll, Becca. Oh boy. We got a nat one, baby. Ooh, oh, yes. yeah. And an eight. Three and a nine. 
four successes. The final is a 16, which still counts. Five, Five successes. Wow. So you succeed. And she, she could change one of those to a one with the determination, right? Yeah. Because that was a natural one. Yeah, if you wanted to, right. but you already so succeeded and successes. generated a point of momentum. If you wanted to burn that determination, you would then gain two points of momentum. It's up to if you and you how you want mind, to If you don't mind, I will hold on to my determination for a future date. Mm, okay. That sounds right. By. That's true. You so many successes. And you gain a point of momentum. Here is your complication. <laughs> As you have the Gamjabar at the adjudicator's neck and you're slowly backing out, you make a motion to Corin and Aurelius that like, they're good to go. And do you guys leave? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Aurelius slides out. Corin slides out. The complication is Delessa, just as you get the door at, to the door, Fenton Quill turns and looks to, and doesn't see the adjudicator there and then turns and sees you <laughs> with the Gamjabar to the neck of the adjudicator. And he knows what's happening here. He knows that he's powerless. And he says, I never liked you. I never liked your house or your shitty plays that you put on. <laughs> Run. Run so that the Baron may find you and kill you like the dogs you are. And we'll see you next week. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. You are free as a car rolls up and an 80s music hits as you yeah. jump in the back. <laughs> <laughs> it was that the was heat epic. of the moment. Oh, we got ourselves an adjudicator. <laughs> yeah. I can't believe What am I going to do with a hostage adjudicator? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, it's, and maybe one of you catches out of the corner of your eye as Pharaoh sits down in the, in the ornithopter. It's just like a little... Just a, just a tendril of gray hair, like <laughs> <laughs> receding into his scalp. Awesome. Oh, amazing. Awesome. Amazing. Good night, everybody. We'll see you next week. 